Good evening, everyone. The point of time has arrived. This is April 3rd, 2024. This is the meeting of the Mashpee Planning Board here at Town Hall in Lacoit Room, 16 Great Neck Road North, Mashpee, Mass. I welcome everyone tonight. We're being broadcast live on local channel eight and streamlined live on the Town of Mashpee website. If you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have the minutes of the meeting of March 20th, 24. Um, does anyone, I will take a motion to accept the minutes of the, this meeting as presented or amended. So moved. Second. Any discussion? No, seeing, seeing as there's none, uh, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Okay. Can we um, postpone the next ish, the next set of minutes? I haven't read them. Pardon me? Can we table the next set of minutes to our next meeting? I haven't read them. Okay, so motion to table the, I read them. the minutes of um, the December 18th, the joint meeting with the select board and the planning board until our next meeting, which will be April 17th. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, before I ask for public comment, um, <clears throat> our town manager has given me permission to read what he's written, and you're going to hear this memorandum multiple times, but, you know, the more you hear it, the more you understand it. Um, so I'll, with that, I'll read it. In just over one month, residents of Mashpee will have the opportunity to decide whether to authorize funding for phase two of the wastewater management and clean water plan initiated in 2015. Many people have had questions relative to the scope of this project and its cost. At times, the technical elements of the project overwhelm people, and this has led to confusion and at times compounding questions. I prefer to provide a simple perspective and brief summary of pertinent information. I recently met with folks from Envision Mashpee and the Clean Water Coalition. It was suggested that this critical timing was necessary to provide voters with an informed path toward town meeting May 6, 2024. First and foremost, Article 6 of the special town meeting will rescind the previously authorized borrowing at the October 16, 2023 town meeting in the amount of four and a half million. Article four of the annual town meeting will authorize the town to fund 96.1 million to complete phase two. The scope of the plan and specific roads involved can be found at the town of Mashpee website. Click on the clean water tab. At the top of the page, you can review the roads covered by phase two. What most people ask is, what will this cost them? After consultation with the finance team, the wastewater management superintendent, engineers, and others, it is important to provide a good faith estimate based upon reasonable and realistic projections. I have consistently strived to minimize the impact on the property tax rate paid by Mashpee citizens. Therefore, all available funding sources have been utilized to lower the amount to be assessed to the levy through a debt exclusion in May. My debt service plan relies on the following. One, obtaining a zero state, zero percent state revolving fund or SRF loan. Mashpee's eligibility for this loan was confirmed by a DEP letter last week and is contingent on our continued compliance with the flow neutral bylaw and voter approval of the project in May. Two, 25% principal debt relief from the Cape and Islands Water Protection Fund, written confirmation of which, which was received last week. Three, 3.3 principal forgiveness provided by the Mass Clean Water Trust 
per their regulations and formula. Four, using all future projected revenue not already committed to prior debt service from the WIF and the Wastewater Stabilization Fund consistent with conservative estimates for revenue growth and developed internally. Five, tapping the levy for a property tax increase based only on the debt service not covered by the revenue streams above. <clears throat> the bottom line is that I expect the phase two property tax increase averaged over the 30 year life of the SRF loan to be about $75 per year for the average residential valued home, which is roughly 772,000 in Mashpee. To put it in simple terms, this is likely to cost less than an expensive cup of coffee per week. I would further point out that the debt payments on phase two will not commence until fiscal 2029 at the earliest. This project will not have a fiscal impact on the tax rate for almost five years, during which time we will have the opportunity to adjust our payment approach to further reduce tax impacts if revenues exceed the conservative projections. This estimate does not include any operational adjustments or increases. Unless the select board has any objections, this will be the information delivered to the sewer commission at tomorrow's special meeting, which was yesterday, and this guidance should be distributed to provide voters with information in preparation for town meeting. And I will add that after he read it at the select board meeting, there was quite a bit of applause. So I guess people are happy with the $75 a year <laughs> uptick in taxes projected. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, any, uh, anyone else want to speak? Yes, Arden, public comment. Thank you. You got one. Hi, good evening, Arden Russell, Sturgis Lane. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, for reading that statement. That's actually related to my first comment. Um, I wanted to bring to everybody's attention that the town manager had just made this statement to both the select board and the sewer commission that our SRF funding is contingent on compliance with our flow neutral bylaw. Um, I see that as a mandate from him to all departments, boards and committees um, in order to protect our SRF funding. Um, in that case, this board cannot possibly approve the proposal by Willowbend for their Cranberry Point project and still comply with our existing flow neutral bylaw. Um, you're attempting to issue a permit for more bedrooms than are currently allowed, and even your draft permit conditions acknowledge that, 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 that they're uh, asking for more, per more bedrooms than is currently allowed. Um, additionally, after your last meeting with the building commissioner, we all now know that permit conditions are meaningless. He doesn't read the permit, he ignores the conditions. Conditioning this permit might make this board feel good, but we know it's not a real solution or protection because there is no confidence that any of those conditions are gonna be enforced by our building commissioner. Conditions in Mashpee are pointless. <clears throat> I handed to each of you a section of Mashpee zoning bylaw which lists the required findings for issuance of a special permit. It clearly defines the criteria that each permit must meet in order to receive a positive determination. In my opinion, there is no way in good conscience that you can make a positive determination meeting those criteria for the Cranberry Point project. And then just personally, I'm really deeply disappointed in many of you on this board. You publicly speak in favor of environmental protection. You advocate for increased setbacks to wetlands. You speak in opposition of increased density in order to protect our degraded waters, and you run as clean water candidates. And then when you have the opportunity to act on those values, it appears you're gonna fail. Again, just deeply disappointed. Thank you. Madam Chair, just a point of order. Pardon me? Just a point of order. As yes. you go through public comment. 
I just want to remind the board that the public hearing on the, the public hearing on this matter has been closed. Yes. So no additional testimony pertaining to the application yes. can be considered as you deliberate on the project. So we cannot talk any further because we have closed the meeting on well, issues related to this. Only anyone can provide any comment they desire. I'm just saying for the purposes of your deliberation, you shouldn't consider any additional testimony. So we can still have public comment on this, but not consider it? That is up to you, Madam Chair. I just want to remind you of, no, the, of the, that okay. fact. Okay, then I'm, I'm going to stop the, the public comment oh, now. No, 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 no. I, I'm not, I'm not suggesting you stop the public comment. Well, I'm just reminding the board that- It's kind of here, it's like the toothpaste is out of the tube, so the, it's hard the, not to I'm just reminding it. the board that the public hearing has been closed. So you can't, he's, what he's saying is you can still have public comment, you just can't let it change your mind when you deliberate. That's kind of an oxymoron, really, because but, but it, it, it- Let them speak, the people. You've public. already let one. <laughs> oh, I've let one, so I guess I have to let another. Okay, come on up. Well, okay, so now I have a number of public comments, not even what I've handed you. You cannot tell people what they can and can't say in public comment. Right. If I want to sit here and pick my nose during public comment, I can do that. All right, move on. Let's, Let's just get you. Let me hear what you have me to say. You cannot tell me to move on, Karen. You Madam Chair, cannot do that. I wasn't suggesting we yeah. restrict anyone's comment. I'm just merely reminding you in my professional capacity that the public hearing has been so closed. So one and you of the things I'm going to say right now is the procedure that happened during this public hearing is atrocious. So many rules and regulations were broken that I am just appalled. We know, Madam Chairman, that you had a private off-the-record meeting with the project proponents. You did not do that with the permission of your board. You did not do that at the direction of your board. And okay, there I are no notes. Right now, because this is putting an idea in the head of the public. This has I already am been resolved. To do that. This has already been resolved. A letter. If you if you paid attention, you would have read my letter that I sent to the planning I board did. on that. So I don't did. say that it has not been it's resolved. It's not resolved. I did not. I wouldn't engage. I, I would just listen to that. I'm not, okay. not, not going to engage. You need to let me finish what I'm here to say. There have been numerous egregious problems connected to this just like that. I asked for notes and was told I could not have notes for that meeting. Therefore, we have no idea what went on in that meeting. You, Mr. Richardson, said at the very beginning of this public hearing that you golfed there and you were voting in favor of it because you golfed there. You need, well, we'll go back and look at it. I remember it, I was shocked. You should recuse yourself because you've already said you have a personal connection to the project proponents. You can't be doing this. The subject of my talk tonight is deny without prejudice. And there are many reasons why you should deny without prejudice. You've just heard two. <laughs> Willow Bend Development Corporation must provide a comprehensive water pollution analysis before the Mashpee Planning Board can consider granting a special permit modification that would allow said corporation to construct an additional 12 cottage style homes on four acres adjacent to its golf course property. The proposed expansion will significantly increase groundwater pollution in the adjacent Papanasset Bay and Quaker Run watersheds. Willowbend claims that this will not be the case. However, by law, they must now prove that before the planning board can judiciously decide whether or not to grant the special permit. Given the already degraded water quality in these abatements, allowing additional high density development without carefully evaluating the water quality impacts would directly conflict with the wetlands protection law and the groundwater quality objectives of the Massachusetts general bylaws. Let's look at regulatory context. You're a lawyer, let's do that. Sections 174 and 17420 and 17432 of the general bylaws establish specific performance standards 
to protect the town's drinking water supplies and coastal embayments from nitrogen contamination. I'll let you read that legislation. It's not me. Those are the bylaws. Or those are the, that's the Massachusetts statement. Excess pollutants can fuel severe algal blooms leading to low dissolved oxygen, fish kills, and loss of recreational uses. The Massachusetts Estuaries Project and other studies have extensively documented how these pollutants have degraded Mashpee's embayments and have set aggressive pollution reduction targets to restore these water bodies to health. Let me repeat, the legislation calls for pollution reduction, not increase. The development will inevitably, inevitably increase water pollution. Mashpee has invested more than 15 years into developing a comprehensive management plan to protect its water resources. The plan received state approval in 2015. It relies on an adaptive management approach that combines innovative strategies like shellfish aquaculture with targeted expansion of traditional water infrastructure. But its success depends on carefully evaluating and controlling new sources of pollutants so that reduction gains are not undermined by additional growth. The Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs certificate approving the town's wastewater plan makes that clear. No development, regardless of its proposed wastewater treatment, should be improved unless it can definitely prove that it will not jeopardize these irreplaceable resources. Let me repeat that. Definitely prove that it will not jeopardize these irreplaceable resources. This means that even projects connecting to a sewer cannot simply assume compliance. Ergo, the burden of proof is not on the town, but on the project proponents. Not on the town, but on the project proponents. They must do the work ahead of time, well before the town can approve their project. They must do their due diligence. In this particular case, they most definitely have not done so. The Willowbend property adjoins several water bodies that are critically impaired by nitrogen loading. These, these waters all significantly exceed their nitrogen limits. In the Papanasset Bay system, nitrogen must be reduced by 54% from 34 to 15 kilograms per day. In the Santuit system, including Quaker Run, a 423% reduction is required. Let me repeat that. 423% reduction is required. I didn't make up that number. Ergo, Willabend has a problem. Here's what the corporation's Troy Miller says in his 2023 letter. These 14 units, and I know they've reduced it to 12, but I'm quoting, will be serviced by the Willabend wastewater treatment system under the terms of the DEP groundwater discharge permit by treating the effluent from the project at the plant, total nitrogen loading for the 14 units will be 50% less than if the site were to be developed independently as three single units. The applicant suggests that by connecting to the existing wastewater plant, rather than using individual septic systems, the project will have an acceptable nitrogen impact. This claim is unsubstantiated by any actual loading data or modeling. This is a claim that has not been backed up at all. Simply comparing planned homes to an imaginary alternative of three septic systems is not a valid basis for approving a major increase in density with all its concomitant polluting effects like destroying trees, bushes, and other natural plant systems and wastewater flow. I've given you all papers here and I ask a number of questions and explains why I've asked the questions. The questions have not been answered. Who has the burden of proof here? Who has the burden of proof? The burden of proof is on Willowbend because of this legislation to answer these questions and affirmatively demonstrate through rigorous modeling that its expansion will not add to the town's nutrient liability. 
It is not sufficient to simply claim a connection to the existing treatment plant will minimize impacts. Actual data on the mass loading, plume mitigation, and water impacts are required. MASHB officials and the public need this information to make an informed judgment about the project's consistency with the town's watershed nitrogen plan and water resource protection bylaws. In summary, Willowbend's requested special permit modification will result in a substantial increase in density and intensity of use that will definitely have significant water quality impacts. The planning board must demand a detailed site-specific nitrogen loading analysis as the project is located in a highly sensitive environmental setting where even the smallest increase will jeopardize restoration efforts. <coughs> the secretary's certificate makes clear that the town must rigorously evaluate all development for consistency with its compliant plan. This is not optional, this is the law. So I'd just like to thank Mary Wagan in particular for her diligence on this effort over maybe the last year or so. We wouldn't even know these things were going on if she didn't do so much homework at home over the weekend. I know she does that. I want to thank her. I think she's a terrific planning board member. I'm allowed to say publicly I'm voting for her for planning board. And I'd like to thank the rest of you too for the service that you do in various ways. Okay. Yes, do you want to speak as a private citizen or in what capacity? No, he's not a citizen. Uh, quickly, I, I would just... Uh, Please give your name for the people. Jack McElhinney. Uh, this is out of order. Um, this board is... The public hearing is closed. It went on for well over a year. Um, I have no objection to uh, debating these comments, but this board is allowing the public record, which has been established over a year, to be tainted by comments after the public record has been closed. And if we were sitting in a court of law, the judge would likely say, that should be stricken from the record. I, you know, I understand the, you know, the, uh, uh, intent to allow people to speak at uh, public comment, but that cannot be a subterfuge for advocating a, a position when the project proponent and the public is not on notice that that's occurring tonight. So this is a bad practice. Uh, you should consult town council about its uh, appropriateness because it is completely tainting the public record here and uh, invalidating any record evidence put before this board before that. So I, I would just uh, caution the board to accept, not accept this. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, <clears throat> let's, let's see through. now, we're coming to the public hearing and um, <clears throat> Evan, our town planner has to Recuse himself, correct? Uh, on the matter of Mr. Jonquera, yeah. I, I do. Yes, I have a conflict of interest. I need to leave Okay, and Mary, you're in a butter? I, I'm in a butter. I live at 35 of Schumann Road, so I see some of my neighbors here. But I have to recuse myself because I'm in a butter. And that's how the ethics laws work um, in Massachusetts. So excuse me. Thank you. So we have sufficient people. Rob will be seated for this hearing. Bob Hansen. Okay, I'll read the agenda first and then I'll read the public notice. <clears throat> the applicant is Joe, and I apologize for mispronouncing, Junquera. 474 Main Street, map 27-21A, and 31 Eshumit Road, map 2721B. For the request, applicant proposes to construct a 4,752 square foot commercial building 
for retail sales of water-related products with indoor and outdoor storage. You don't have an easel. <clears throat> Mashpee Planning Board Public Hearing Notice. Pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A, the Massachusetts Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024 at 710 p.m. in the Wacoit Meeting Room at the Mashpee Town Hall, 16 Great Neck Road North, to consider an application by Mr. Junquera, property owner, requesting a special permit to construct and operate a 4,752 square foot commercial building for retail sale of plumbing and water related products with accessory storage at a current vacant property addressed at 30, as 31 Schumann Road slash 474 Main Street, Mass B Mass 02649. Assessor's map 27-21A and 27-21B. The subject lot is located predominantly in the C3 limited commercial zoning district with portions of the parcel bisected by the R5 zoning districts and is located within the groundwater protection district and light industrial overlay district. This petition is made pursuant to the Mashpee zoning bylaw sections 174-24 paren C close paren 1 paren close 174-25 E 13 174-45.6 D and article 13 groundwater protection district and 174-25.1 standards for developments in C3 districts um, Mr. Pesci I'm going to go through what's included in this packet and if you would be so kind to tell us to the best of your knowledge if it's a complete package. All right. We have uh, an application for special permit dated February 12, 2024. Uh, two adjoining parcels on 40,442 square feet um, and one has 58,298 square feet. Um, checks um, from Cape Wide Construction to the town of Mashby, totaling $5,525. Two quit claim deeds uh, conveying this land <clears throat> in question to Mr. Let me make sure I'm saying this right. Junquera. Is it Junquera? Anybody know? Yes? Okay. Um, then we have the proposed site plan development, which we have bigger copies if anyone here on the board wants to see a bigger one. And then we have a very extensive drainage analysis report. And then we have Mr. Pesci's engineering report on the matter, which we'll come back to. <clears throat> so, with that said, one one additional item, Madam Chair. Is there Chair. something missing? Architectural plans were submitted as well. Floor plans and elevations of the proposed yeah. okay. building. Okay. Yes, you're correct. Thank you. Um, so we'll have um, the party proponent come up. Okay. The agent. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, and uh, Mr. Pesci. Uh, for the record, Attorney Christopher Corain. I am representing Joel Jenquer. He is the owner of the properties located at uh, four, uh, 31 Schumann and 474 uh, Main Street. Uh, before we begin, I just want to make one point of clarification. There was an error in the uh, in the size of the building, it's a 6,000 square foot building, not a 4,700 square foot building. So if the board were to uh, make a motion to approve it, I would just want to make sure that that uh, is, is addressed. So a 6,000 square foot building. Uh, commercial building. So as noted in the uh, in the public hearing notice, uh, the applicant is uh, proposing a commercial building within the C3 zoning district. And uh, as noted, a portion of this property is located in the R3 zoning district. It's the bottom corner of the property. If you look at the site plan. Can you lift that up? 
Thank you. It's this corner right here. <coughs> that's in the R R five. I'm sorry. Everything above that is in the uh, in the C three zone. And Chris, could you tell us the streets exactly what we're looking at there? So you have a Schumann Road down here and Main Street up here. And the entrance to the building is will be off of the Schumann. Okay. That's right. And also the, the lot is located in the light industrial over district, overlay district, as well as the groundwater protection district. Um, with me tonight is Robert Duar. He is with Bracken Engineering, is the engineer for the project. Also with me is Joel Genquera and Roger Brooks from Cape White Construction, uh, who will be the uh, general contractor. And also with me tonight are representatives of EJ Prescott, who is the potential end user for the building. Uh, they have a, a location in Mashpee already. They've been in town for 20 years, uh, and they're looking for uh, you know a permanent uh, structure that they own. So they're the potential end user for the for the building. The uh, the C3 zoning district has the following minimum dimensional requirements: lot area 40,000 square feet, frontage 200 square feet, front yard setback of 75 feet rear yard setbacks of 20 feet, side yard setback of 20 feet, lot coverage of 20%. The lot is 90,000 square feet and has over 259, uh, 200, over 200 feet of frontage on Main Street and over 200 and, uh, 259 feet on a Schumann Road. So both of those are uh, within the minimum dimensional requirements of the C3 zoning district. The proposed structure will be 76 feet from Main Street, which is conforming. The uh, proposed structure will be 245 feet from a Schumann, which will be conforming. The uh, building will be 107 seven feet from the southerly side yard setback and 21 feet from the northerly side setback. Lot coverage is 6.1%, so well under the 20% maximum allowed in this zoning district. The project has been reviewed by uh, site plan review, which is a composition of all the uh, department heads, uh, including Board of Health, Planning, Fire, Police, uh, Board of Health, and DPW and Building. There are nine parking spaces uh, proposed, including one handicap space that meets the requirements uh, for, the, for the zoning bylaw. Again, there will be one access to, uh, which will be off of Schumann Road. Uh, there'll be no traffic entering or exiting onto Main Street. If you look at the colored photo, all that dark green will remain natural. So we're not touching any of that. So you do have some pretty substantial natural buffer that will be remaining. The orange may be disturbed, but that will be replanted. And then obviously you have the, uh, the structure and pavement that uh, shows in the middle. Next week, the project will also have to go through the historic district because it is within the historic district in Mashby. So it will be being reviewed for architectural uh, next week. Um, again, as we noted, the prospective end user is EJ Prescott. They uh, provide products related to water service, stormwater, wastewater. Uh, no hazardous materials are going to be expect are going to be uh, stored on site. Uh, we have fi filed under uh, 17425E3, which is a place for retail and wholesale of plumbing supplies. So that is allowed in the C3 district with the, uh, upon the grant of a special permit by this board. The special criteria Special permit criteria for this board is that you know the project complies with all town, state, and town regulations and bylaws. Again, we meet all the zoning bylaw requirements for minimum dimensional requirements for this lot. Uh, will not adversely affect the public health and safety. Um, again, they have an existing operation on Industrial Drive. Uh, we're not aware of any issues or incidents with uh, what what's going on there now, and it'll be a, a similar uh, use to what that is. Um, no excessive demand on community facilities. Again, existing, you know, hasn't caused any problems. Uh, it's not in any conservation jurisdiction, so we're not uh, going to be affecting any wetland resource areas. Uh, we've provided uh, stormwater management. Uh, we don't impact, uh, and again, you know, the mem 
representatives from EJ Prescott can talk about the existing use of the property. We don't anticipate there's any uh, going to be any traffic issues for this project. We don't. There's not going to be big trucks coming in and out of it. You know, you mostly see contractors with uh, with pickup trucks. Uh, you know, at maybe the peak time. So, but again, we're not seeing big trucks going in and out. It's one end user. So I want to make that clear. It's not a con We're not asking for a contractor bay building with multiple tenants, with multiple landscapers going in and out. It's a one end user. Um, and again, no excessive noise, vibrations. There's been no complaints that they're existing. Um, and, you know, we don't expect any uh, adverse impact on neighboring properties. This lot is a vacant lot. It's in between the office buildings at the, at the corner of Schumann and, and uh, Main Street, and on the other side is the, uh, the contractor yard landscaping mulch uh, operation. So we're right in between those. So, um, you know, we're not that far down the street from the projects that, you know, the uh, subdivisions at Nicoletta's Way, Echo Road, um, and Evergreen Circle. So, um, you know, again, where those have multiple users, you know, we only have one end user in this particular project. So, you know, with that, I'm happy to uh, turn it over to the board for any questions of anybody on our development team. Again, we're, uh, you know, we have a lot of people here who can answer any questions uh, about the project, about EJ Prescott, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> I think the problem with the mistake about the 6,000 square feet, if I'm remembering it from design review, it was like 4,700 and something right. for the warehouse and then 1,200 and something for, for a showroom. showroom. Correct. So combined, it's the 6,000, so it's, it's under 10,000. That's correct. Okay. I mean, it's under, you know, typically our triggers are 10,000 square All feet right. for Cape Cod Commission, 7,500 square feet for a sprinkler system. You know, you're looking at a 6,000 square foot building, which is probably one of the smaller buildings that you'll see. You know, everybody's pushing the 7,500 square foot limits. Everybody's pushing the 10,000 square foot limits. You know, we're not doing this here. Uh, again, you know, lot coverage is 6.1%. So they could certainly have proposed a larger building, uh, but they're not doing that. They're, you know, going for the size that, you know, works for them. Um, in the, <clears throat> just a minute, standards for development in C3 districts under section 174-25.1, which I know you know, uh, number five, I, I do not remember something that Evan said, and I want to just clear this up. It reads, signage, lighting, and any noisy or odorous activity shall be located so as not to have any significant adverse impact on adjacent or nearby residentially zoned parcels. Right. Has the lighting design been done? Um, I don't know if it's been completed yet. We generally, you know, uh, Rob can talk about that, but, you know, all the projects that I've worked with with Cape Wide, they always do the, the dark, you know, as Ed had recommended, the dark okay. light. So that's what will be proposed, and, okay. you know, we're, we're going to uh, meet those requirements. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, well, we don't have to go through the colors and all that because right. I'm, I'm familiar, but right. the, the, the front part facing one third, not the front, the side facing 130 or Main Street is clapboard. Correct. And the rest are shingles on all right. the other sides. Right. So this isn't going to be like your typical metal building that you see on Echo or every, because we're in the historic district, so we have to comply with the historic district. So that's why you're going to see more of the Cape Cod shingles and, uh, you know, clapboard and things of that nature. And I read that uh, with commercial buildings, <clears throat> you don't have what's called a tight tank. You have a holding tank. Right. And where does that holding tank go? Um, I'll turn that question over to Rob. <laughs> okay. And is there any difference between the two of them? Right. Yeah. There is. Uh, good evening. Again, Robert DeWar with Bracken Engine Engineering here on behalf of the design team. Um, the holding tank is required. I um, mean, it's not part of the septic system. Uh, that is for that be connected to the floor drains in the in the building. Anytime that there is um, like a overhead garage door, that any potential of a vehicle entering the building requires uh, all floor drains to be connected to a holding tank. Um, so then that can be pumped out. It doesn't. There's no leaching field or anything. It's it's actually a double walled tank. So there's no potential for leakage. Um, and then there's an alarm assigned to that at 75% capacity. Um, and when that happens, um, they have a, an appropriate pumping truck come and pump it out. So that'll happen multiple times during the year? Potentially in this usage, uh, because they are only selling um, really like plumbing equipment, um, piping, likely they may go many years without pumping it out. 
Um, other uses, an automotive shop might pump theirs out, you know, often. Um, but we wouldn't anticipate that here. Right. I mean, uh, you know, and again, if there's any questions for EJ Prescott, but my understanding is they have one pickup truck, a one-ton pickup truck, and a forklift. Yeah. That's all the that's their, uh, you know, the substance substance of the vehicles they use on site. So I, I don't expect that they're going to have, you know, much need to be pumping the holding tank on a, you know, frequent basis. Let me basis. Just go back to you. You kind of went a little fast. Sorry. I just want to know in section 174-25.1, which is the C3 district, did you, do you respond positively to each and every item here? One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> a minimum of 40%, I heard that, of the site shall be left in an undisturbed natural state. No building shall exceed 20,000 square feet of gross floor area, yeah. except a congregate care assisted living facility of less than two stories. I'll go into that. Yeah, we're not, uh, as again, we're a 6,000 square foot building. Okay. Um, you know, we only have one driveway access. Um, there's no wetlands uh, there. Um, signage and lighting, obviously, we're going to keep that all on site. Uh, I can let Rob address the 40%. You know, if he is that meeting the. F yep, uh, this is the 40% undisturbed. Left and undisturbed. Um, yes, we do have less than 40% disturbed um, area of the lot. Um, I believe that calculation is shown on the plan. I'd have to double check the Is right. the orange the disturbed part? So the orange um, is temporarily disturbed. Um, and then it gets restored back at the end of construction. It has to be disturbed just to allow some of the grading for, sure. the, for the site. And there's no off street, uh, all off street parking facilities are within the, you know, within the lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, who would like to speak on the board? Any question with the R3? Do we have to have that be changed from our residential or is that okay? I don't know. I mean, there's nothing, I, there's nothing proposed within the R3 part of this. Yeah. Oh, I mean, everything. Sh okay, show us where the yeah, R3, the R3 is. is. Yeah, it's just the R3 is in this, this, this triangle right here. Yeah. Okay, so which is going to be. Natural state. Everything here and all this is all, you know, within the C3. Just, just a portion of the so driveway. only that the back driveway, part right? there right. is, the driveway. is, yeah. is R3. Yeah. Okay. And I believe the bylaw says that if a majority of the lot is in one district, you basically consider it the whole district. But again, there's nothing proposed within that residential okay. part of the district. Okay, very good. Uh, there's, not, there's not proposed right now, but what about five years from now? And somebody wants to buy that to put some house in that. Is that possible, right? Uh, I doubt it, because you'd have to subdivide the lot. I don't think you could. I mean, I, I, I don't predict the future, that? but I don't, think, I don't think you could do that. So, what what is the dimension of that green space there in R three? Yeah, I, I don't know, but they're using the lot. I mean, they need the lot size for this building. So, yeah, you right. know, and there's nothing. Certainly, there's no no residential proposed for this project. They'd have to come before either the zoning board or the planning board. So, I yeah. don't know that it's really relevant to tonight's uh, you know discussion. All right, all right, the second floor. I'd say it says a lot, but limited access to it. What's going to be up there? What could be up in the lot is a distorts. Is there going to be a popping? No, no, there's no residential proposed. So what we're asking for is under 170, 174.25 for a retail build, retail holding. We have not asked for any residential type components, so that's not before this board. We haven't asked for it. Then I see you have two, two bathrooms. And how come you're going on a Title V system? I thought you had to do an alternative system now. But they, not with the tank. Uh, I, the you, you can have, are you saying you can have the, I don't, is Title V a tank? I don't know, holding Title tank. Five is yeah. Holding is, tank. Yeah, but that's, the that's the existing septic trying kind of. to limit them on that. Yeah. They don't want you to use them no more. Yeah. And I thought we just passed something that. Well, we're not near any wetland resource areas. A lot of times you see if you're within X amount of feet of a wetland resource area, it requires those, but I don't, I don't know that there's any so requirement. Still, you still can apply for a Title V from we this can. building then. We can, as long as your nitrogen loading for the lot parcel is low enough. And in this case, because of the bathroom. overall flow, it's not residential. It's just, there's only a couple employees there on site. Um, so the overall loading of the site is, it, and especially with how large the site is, um, we don't need the innovative alternative okay. technology. And another thing, I, I say you're going to put some 
Let, let me let me let Ed you know oh. Ed address I'm that. I'm just going to uh, yes, for the record, I'm Ed Pesci, Pesci Engineering, the consulting engineer for the board. Um, just Rob is correct. So your your um, discussion that was had before about the um, you know uh, uh, controlling the flow, wastewater flow. Generally, it's one bedroom per 10,000 square feet, right? So if we were putting residential here, you have 98,000 square feet here, you could put nine bedrooms here, okay? But a standard residential, a standard single family home residential system is 330 gallons a day, three bedroom. It's not, the design flow is 213 right. gallons per day. So there's no issue whatsoever with the way that the, the, right. the septic system is designed and take the comfort and confidence that they still gotta go to the plant, uh, excuse me, to the to the Board of Health right. to gain approval both for the septic and for the, oh, okay. the holding the, the holding tank. Right. Okay, holding my tank. other question is, I say you're gonna put some <coughs> trees back. But I'd like to see a, uh, a prep with, with what you actually got to plant there. You know, what type of trees and how many and how you're gonna do it along um, the Schumann Road, how you're gonna make it look, you know, like residential. Well, I mean, on a, along a Schumann Road, there really isn't anything that's being disturbed. Okay. Um, you know, because I said all that dark green is not being disturbed, and then you have the retain the the retaining basin, for lack of a better term, in the in the bottom right hand corner. But a lot of that's being left natural. Okay. So. And just to, um, I think, Mr. Pesci had one of his comments was actually on a Schumann Road. Some of that foliage might, may need to be pruned and trimmed just to allow sight distance for yeah. turning because there is a curve there. So, right. <laughs> so yeah. but I, I like to see a you know shrubbery diagrams of what you got to plant and. Correct. So well, the idea sure there, I think, there, right no now is to leave sort. Like, you know, yeah, we want to leave as much of a natural buffer there I hope so. as that, well. That's a good idea. Right. So as you come out a Schumann and you say turn left on 130, you want a good. Sight, sighting, you know, to be able to look out there and not create an accident. So the corner will have very low bushes, I'm presuming. Correct. Well, it it's quite a will be away. enough. Like we won't be affecting the corner of Ashuna right. and and uh, Main no. Street at all. You will not be affecting. No, we're not on the corner of Main Street. Down. So no. there's another property. If you look, so we're coming out here. There's the office buildings that are here. Those yeah. are on the corner of one third. Okay. Yeah, so sorry. this is still a Schumann, and Schumann runs all the way. Oh, over okay. Right? So we're we're not turning on. We're gonna people would come onto a Schumann and then get onto Main Street after traversing. I see. The Schumann, okay. Past Good. this development. Thanks for that clarifying that. Space. Uh, Dale, do you have a question? Uh, no questions. I'm just. Uh, I think um, my main thing would be here was across the street from the Schumann. There's there's homes. There's, uh, people who have houses. To the neighborhood. I'm um, just yes. in my mind. I'm just kind of wondering how this kind of affects their, you know, their homes, their day to day. That's just my my first thought that jumps I, out. I had, a, I had a question similar. Yes, to Dale's, Rob. And that you, uh, you're leaving a lot. I would say compared to what other plan plans show, a lot of natural vegetation. And thank you for doing that. Um, the question is outside storage, pipes, so forth. Mm -hmm. I've seen evidence of pallets of pipes on top of pallets. How high is your maximum stack of outside stored materials, and will the natural foliage screen it? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd have to defer to the to the representatives from EJ on what they actually store and how they do that. But again, I mean, you're looking at probably storage, the building itself is, you know, you're looking at 245 it's quite a ways back, yeah. Back from the Schumann Road, and then you have all this natural vegetation there. I, I, I think there's, you know, it's likely to have sufficient screening. And, you know, and as far as, you know, the effect on the residential neighborhood, I mean, we are located in the C3 zoning district, so that is a district that allows for commercial. And, you know, it's not, it's not like it's the only building there that has commercial use, you know, in proximity to that, we do think that this is going to be a low, low impact, um, you know, project and, and use. So, <clears throat> another thing I like to ask: when you do have a, a trailer come in with the pipes and everything, can you schedule it to be at a certain time so it's not coming in at like lunchtime or, you know? 
Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if you can do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I drove by. I, their, I, I drove by their property at two o'clock this afternoon, and there was no. I didn't see one truck coming in and out of there. So. All right, I just don't want the neighbors. <laughs> trucks are coming. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that they're said they're, again. This EJ Prescott has been in this town for almost yeah, 20 years, I know and you know, I think they're sensitive to those. You know, any of those issues. Um, you know, and happy. You know, I know Ed suggested a stop sign at the at the turn there. Um, but again, we're not. It's not like we're just sticking a commercial building in the middle of a residential zone, and we're the only building there. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Pesci, did you do a, a peer review? I did, um, Madam Chair, and um, you all have a copy of the report. It was uh, finished recently, as you know. Um, I just will state that. Um, I made some comments that I think were relatively easy for them to comply with, relatively minor, some general safety things like we've talked about, dark sky compliant lighting, uh, stop line and stop sign at the end of the driveway. Why? Because it's a retail store as well, so the general public will have access. So I uh, wanted to make sure that was prepared. We just talked about some pruning and clearing at the end of the driveway on the edges of Meshumet Road where their driveway is, because when I went out on the site visit, and looked at the safe site distance, you know, today with no leaves, it's a lot easier. But I know darn well when I get out there in spring, it'll be different. So um, we needed to make sure, certainly looking to the left or toward the east, that, that that area be cleared. It's a lot safer site distance, longer site distance to the west. Uh, but to the east, I felt like that was something we needed to worry about on site. I will certainly be mindful of that when we go out to do inspections. I also included a common um, comment that I use because I feel like it helps the board with final decision making and that is getting comment from the Mashpee Fire Department regarding safe, safe circulation through the site with, uh, um, uh, with, with emergency vehicles and, and or whether or not they want anything else of particular need from a fire safety point of view. Um, they may ask for what's called the swept path, and path analysis for um, since a two-story um, uh, a building, two-story building, they may want to have a, a fire truck, the, the ladder truck swept path analysis. So that's fairly standard, Rob. And it looks like you got more than adequate room to do that. Um, so I don't anticipate any is issue there. We did talk a little bit about holding tank versus tight tank. So I just wanted, uh, I, I have to confess, I was, I was admonished by a, a, a health agent one time years ago saying it's not a, it's not a tight tank, it's a holding tank. Holding tank is classified as a holding tank by the state under 314 18, 314 CMR 18. It's an industrial wastewater holding tank. So tight tank is only referred to as a tight tank when it's domestic wastewater, when it's wastewater under Title V. So there's no wastewater going there. It's, it's snow melt off of vehicles and perhaps some rainwater that might enter the, enter the overhead door or, or something else that might 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 be um, accumulate on the floor. Um, I don't think they're going to, from the use they're having, as long as they're not washing vehicles inside. I don't anticipate them filling that tight tank, excuse me, that holding tank, at all uh, during the course of a year. But um, I asked them to add a few more things to comply with the code for that, which they certainly uh, won't have any problem doing. Um, and finally. I did mention a couple of items. Some of them were small items on stormwater management. One of them was uh, that they consider the use of the NOAA Atlas 14, volume 10, version 3, point precipitation data. It's the state of the art, and NOAA has uh, basically become the state of the art in our profession now. This Atlas 14 recognizes the, the reality of climate change and looks at all the storm events that have happened in the re recent years. Um, and adjusts the 100-year storm event to a current, you know, um, uh, uh, frequency analysis of it. So years ago, just to give you the idea, and that's why I put it in the, in the report, years ago the 100-year storm used to be 7 inches in 24 hours. That was the 100-year storm event for Mashpee. Now it's 7.52 inches. Jeez, it went up higher, wouldn't, wouldn't, we, <laughs> wouldn't we know? Uh, you know, that's what happens, right? So that's what that's what's going on right now. That's our reality. So I asked them to consider that. That's not a very big change in the overall. That's a that's a percentage from seven and a, seven to seven and a half, seven point five two. So it would require them to just run the calculations again and, and to adjust the size of their collection system, their stormwater management system. However, their stormwater management system 
um, that they're using to collect the runoff from the parking lot will adequately perform the total suspended solids removal as required in a, in a zone two or a water protection overlay district, groundwater protection overlay district uh, adequately. I don't see any problem. The final item that I mentioned there was a few uh, housekeeping things that I'd ask them to just put uh, signatures and dates on documents and add a, um, a uh, uh, inspection log for their stormwater on m plant. But really, I, I, I found uh, their design to be pretty straightforward, pretty well done, uh, and I didn't see any major problems with it. Um, <clears throat> would we or would we be ready to vote on this tonight, or is there something we should look at and ask that they complete before we make a decision? Um, Madam Chair, I've, I've done this with a few other communities. As you know, Nantucket, I'll just use the example. The, Nantucket will use the example. If the board has got their questions answered and is satisfied with what's being presented, then they can condition the approval, uh, vote on an approval tonight with responding to and satisfying all the Pesci engineering comments. And they refer to that right in the decision. So if you want, you could do that. If you feel, feel comfortable with that, I would want them to again, go see the fire department, the assistant fire chief, deputy chief, and speak to them about um, whatever comments they may have. And that can be in the form of a letter or an email, either one. Um, but I can, I can certainly work with the Bracken team to, to make sure that they respond. And that, that I will respond in writing that those, all those comments have been satisfied so they can go get a building permit. After they get all the other permits, they can go get a building permit. So I would, I would certainly want that to be I'm, I apologize. What is your name again? <laughs> sure. Uh, again, it's Robert DeWar uh, with Bracken Engineering. Robert DeWar. Um, yep. uh, you, you've read Mr. Pesci's report. Uh, yeah, we have. Um, we did receive that um, last night, and I've actually had a, was unable to um, have a finished version to bring tonight. But I mean, we've already a addressed ninety percent of the comments on the on this um, on the review. Um, I think the only the only one that I'm still working through is, um, and we have no problem updating the storm event for the waste uh, storm water. Um, I think what will happen is you'll see that rain garden increase in size just a little bit. So so there's nothing that you won't do. Yeah, you're going to no. comply with whatever exactly. Mr. Then Pesci wrote. We can fully comply with the review yeah. comments. Yep. And then I would just note one thing. As part of the regulatory process in, in Mashpee, we, we go to what's called site plan review. And at that meeting, you have the fire department there. Yeah, yeah. Fire department participated in that uh, site plan review process. So, you know, we're certainly happy to continue to follow up, but they didn't have any uh, problems with what we presented. Uh, We'd like to see a letter from sure. them, though. No, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I, I completely understand. But That's I, right. yeah. I, sh I should have asked for site plan review comments, yeah. but I don't always get them. Mm -hmm. I do have the minutes with me. Yeah, um, sometimes they don't publish the minutes before this meeting, so I don't even, yeah. I don't even know if they've had a meeting. Right, we did. <laughs> right, so, but but we have no problem following up with the fire department if it's if that's what's conditioned. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, yes. Does that, well, could you? Uh, I, I know you you've got you've been to the historic society next, uh, week. No, next week. Next week. Yeah. And my 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 question, maybe you could just talk to the signage, where and how large and right. how visible it will be and from which directions and so forth. So there's no signage proposed as of right now. So if there if you know the the end user eventually proposes signage that would have to go through the design review process. But and, and the historical and historic yes correct yeah. and historic. So but no signage is proposed as of today. But how would you know you're there if you have a sales room? <laughs> well the building isn't finished yet they could always go at a later <laughs> date. So that's all. They just haven't done it yet. They could certainly do it, you know, prior to the building being utilized. My site, my safe site distance comment mentioned that, that they're obviously going to have some kind of sign at that entrance, and the safe site distance has to be considered where that gets placed so that it doesn't obstruct the view looking left or right. right. Well, I'm on the design review committee, so I know the size, the dimensional requirements, mm -hmm. yeah. and it can't obstruct anything. There's a whole bunch of things, so it's not going to be offensive when if and when they put a sign to identify the building. But that's a good question without no, a No, absolutely, sign, absolutely. You know, how would one know? Right. But right now, as I said, we're not proposing any sign at this time because, you know, they may, a lot of times you see that they'll come later on when the building's, you know, near completion to know where they want to put signs and things of that nature. I wonder if you want to put one like on 130. I mean, because if you have a, a short road, I'm driving down on that, 
where the heck is that plumbing shop? Right. Unless I see it, you know. Well, again, it's not, it's not a Home Depot. It's not a Batello's. So People know the way you are. Yeah, it's, not, it's really more geared towards, uh, you know, contractors. So you're not going to see, you know, this influx of, of individual homeowners coming into this property because, as I said, it's not like that. It's not that type of intensity of use. Actually, when you look at the facades, different facades of the building, this one here, if I recall, the one on the left, that's what you see on... 130, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah, and it, and because it's not like one of those contractor bays. Correct. It actually looks like, you know, kind of like a house. Right. Yeah, right. So right. it's it's except, you know, aesthetically. Right. It's pretty nice. And again, you know, you're going to be we're over 76 feet from that from Main Street anyways, but that will be left mostly natural, so. Yeah, I mean the grass isn't going to be or whatever crazy because you sure. got to be able to right. see, you know. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, um, just public comment. Yes. Come on up and give your name and uh, address. Hi, hello. I'm just testing the thing. The microphone. The microphone, uh, do I need to do any? No, it's oh. dark, but. Okay. I do have eight copies. I counted uh, eight copies uh, of what I'll be reading. And, uh, yeah. Okay. I have to first for the Thank you. I collected uh, some signatures in the back. Uh, if I was one one uh, more person, more person, I would have been able to fill in uh, quite a bit. But uh, the weather not permitting. Uh, uh, I have one copy for uh, Mary, Mary. Yeah, right here. More than Mary, maybe, yeah. For the counter. Do you have any copy for Mr. Junquera? I got. Eight copies for you. I I could email copies to the uh, lawyer and stuff like that. Um, I mean, but be reading exactly the stuff. And if you want, uh, we could give them one. Well, I can give them mine and read Mary's. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Fine. Yeah. Take Mary's. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> State your name and address. Yes, I am Muhammad Fahad. I am an abutter, and it's uh, 35 Ashumit. Uh, basically, the presentation of the, I call it the lawyer for the uh, applicant, was good. What I mean by good, uh, as any uh, lawyer would do, they will always uh, present uh, the salient points and cover up the little things. Uh, the main issue that I found out myself with this matter is basically the uh, location of the Excuse street. Excuse me, Mohammed. Could you, would you mind just speaking up a little bit louder and speak a little slower? Okay. Thank you. I am warming up. So the main issues that I found out with uh, everybody around um, my area is the access, is the use of Ashumit Road. And uh, you could see from the map over there, actually from the, uh, you could see that uh, there is possibility, it's feasible to have access from the uh, 130, Route 130. And uh, it is much more uh, feasible, it's much easy, and there will be not much objection. However, so the entrance way to this project should be from the main street only. Ashumit Road is a dead-end residential street and should be protected from commercial traffic and noise. Commercial traffic on Ashumit Road would disrupt our peaceful residential neighborhood, damage the road, cause disruptive noise, disrupt pedestrian use of our <coughs> street, including biking, and lower our property values. I'll say again, lower our property values. The plan for the commercial building clearly shows 
an 18-wheeler truck in the parking lot for deliveries. Trucks will go in and out, supposedly, for small businesses to pick up, contractors to pick up, but the delivery of 18-wheeler is also something that will happen. The trucks are too large. Now the 18-wheeler truck are too large and too disruptive for Ashumit Road. Anybody who drives from 130 wants to go into Ashumit Road has to slow because opposite he could find somebody and it's tough that is no curb. And that's difficult to do. Uh, Ashumit Road is not engineered or built for heavy traffic, truck traffic. And if you go into the road, you inspect the pavement, you will see immediately. And this is important. The 130 is better graded, can handle the stuff. Uh, there is no curbing, again, and it is a dead end road. The intersection of Ashumit Road and Main Street has already failed and is in need of repair and, and reconstruction. We'll live with it, but it's working. Now, commercial traffic will seriously add to the damage of this intersection and damage the street, which again is not designed or constructed for 18-wheeler trucks. We ask that you do not allow commercial traffic on our street. Moreover, commercial traffic on Ashumit <coughs> Road would endanger pedestrians, and I would say runners and bikers, who use Ashumit Road to connect to the pedestrian way on Route 130. On a daily basis, multiple pedestrians and runners use Ashumit Road and connect to the pedestrian way along Main Street. <coughs> At the end of Ashumit Road, towards uh, Route uh, 130, most pedestrians turn right and head towards the Indian Museum and the Herring Run, etc., and go to other places. Most do not turn left, which leads to the commercial areas along Main Street, which is what we call the uh, C3 zone. We ask that the entrance may be relocated to Main Street. The development could share the entrance way of the property, or whatever it is they want to do, they have enough space to actually do it on Main Street. Uh, we don't need to tell them what to do, they could see it right away. And they could, uh, adjust, they could adjust the building in such a way that it will uh, serve them the way they like it. And we don't need to bother too much with the issue. Now, the second point. The asphalt parking lot is too large. This large asphalted area will lead to unsightly outdoor commercial storage of new and used products and equipment. This will negatively impact our neighborhood and lower our residential property value. That's in case the access from the uh, Ashumet Road is still there. We, re we request that either the outdoor storage of products and equipment be prohibited or that all outdoor storage of products and equipment be screened with solid wooden fencing. That's again if they want to do the uh, access from Ashumit. <laughs> However, to avoid the creation of a heat island, I mentioned the, uh, the asphalted area, which is, is a heat island, the parking lot should be white topped to create cool pavement as recommended by the US EPA. Uh, I handed uh, the lawyer a uh, the copy. He will see the uh, link to the issue of uh, covering the, the asphalt area. Now, to protect our residential neighborhood and our property values, we request the deliveries and trash remover are limited to 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday and are, pro are, are pro prohibited on Sundays. This is, again, if you leave the side uh, road access from Ashumit Road. So those points have to do with Ashumit Road access. <coughs> However, we are asking, and myself personally, I ask that this matter be resolved by having the uh, plan B, actually the main plan, access from Route 130. All the businesses have that, and the businesses who have it on the side basically are into a territory that is totally um, no problem with, with a residential access, no issue. But in our case, it is mixed and it's going to be an issue. So, uh, but uh, also with respect to the uh, heat island, they have to cover it with uh, a white topped 
to make a cool pavement reflective, etc. But also the issue is with the lighting. Uh, well, lighting by insurance, they have to have lighting. They could make sure that the lighting doesn't shine to the outside, it mean the uh, abutting people. I live actually uh, right close to the building. My building is just uh, right across from them. Uh, that's uh, mainly that's mainly it. Thank you. Thank you. The the abutters who <coughs> these are all abutters <coughs> who signed this are Mohammed Fad, Matthew Croto, Carly Campbell, Bruce. I can't really read that. Fernandez. 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 Laura Strong, Kim Crawford, Joel Crawford, Clifford. Sh Oh, Clifford, Joel Clifford, Sherman Tharrett, Claudia Fernandez, and Cindy Drew. Oh, and more. Wilfred, is it Roth? Do you know who that, that name is at 35 Schum Schumann? It's like Rock. Yep, Rock. 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 Michelle Hyatt and Lilia Hyatt. Thank you, Mohammed. Yes, uh, but I am um, just one little notice. I spoke with respect about it from the people of Oak Hollow. That's my condominium association. However, there is a side road right a little bit right before the planned or whatever. <clears throat> it is all colony. And that's also that's the only access they have. It is all what? The old, old, old colony is basically a whole neighborhood association on yeah. the side just before, uh, before this planned thing towards Route 130. So that increases also the issue. Across from them also, I mean, all these things add up. And then we are not only the Oak Hollow uh, condominium, be, beyond us is uh, the, uh, a dog uh, uh, park and we have what they call pickleball, and we have access also to the playgrounds. And these are folks, not trucks, these are folks that come uh, by bike or come by car, etc. but their intention is just uh, residential, not like uh, industrial or stuff like that. So it's better to have them on the big side, <coughs> and they are able to do it with ease. It's not an issue. Thank you. And there, you know, there, there are folks who have homes, their, drive, their homes are on the Schumann room, Virtually across, like across the street from this proposed driveway, their driveway is Absolutely. virtually across the street. So I'm just that that affects them greatly. Um, Ed, <clears throat> I'm thinking that perhaps we should continue this hearing till next time. So what shall we have, Ma Madam Chair? It seems like um, Madam Speaker. Oh, sorry. But yeah, yes. we're not done. Yeah, we're not. We're not done. We can talk after. Mr. Junkera, do you want to speak? Uh, Ma'am, shall we have a gentleman right here? Guy here. Want to speak? Oh. Yeah. Would you like to speak, sir? Oh, that's what you're here for. Yes, sir. I'm his spouse. Okay. Okay, you, please sit down. Please give your name and your address, sir. My name is Leonard Parkman, uh, number two, Assumant Road. Uh, my, my wife here, Diane. We live, live in a house in, in back off of uh, a Schumann in the woods. We uh, got one of those letters from uh, from you within 300 feet within the project proposed. So, so uh, we thought about it. One of the, the gentlemen here, I can almost mirror what he said. I, I should preface this, you know, as a wife, I, I always do this now. But in any event, Leonard grew up, we live in a property in the back. He grew up, for, and he's, he doesn't want me to say this, but he's nearly 80 years old. So he's lived on that corner of where he lived, right there on 130, and we live in back of it, right on a Schumert Road, to, to a Schumert Road. We know what it's zoned for because he's been there nearly 100 years, and so we know, we, we know that it was zoned in a time when there weren't that many people here, and the idea was that it, it would be for small, small places. Now, this is, you know, a long time after we're talking about we live there. It's a residential area. 
We live there, he's lived there. There are people across the street. 130 does have businesses, it, all, it has for many years. Um, but we live in Old Colony is there with a group of homes. It's a neighborhood. Be there no mistake, it is a neighborhood where we have children and dogs and such and such. And, and therefore, I just want to preface that to let you know the history that we've been here, we know what it is, we know what it's zoned for, and, and we know that business has happened, and, and, but we're looking at also mirroring what Mohammed, I believe, said, that that is indeed a neighborhood, and there, there are uh, play areas, other things going on, and coming in from on, um, on one, on a, it's a Schumann, right? Is, is going to really impact, you know, the driveway, the traffic increase, it's the infrastructure is not set up, it hasn't been set up for the volume that it has today. You know, you add to that, you're, you're, you're impacting the environment, the value of property, the, the um, people being able to live and walk and move and other things, so we're looking at all of those things. We're looking at the noise, we're talking, looking at the safety, we're looking at, um, the, at the access, you know, more, more traffic. We've seen it increase where it's just, it doesn't really, I mean, that street is not made to take the traffic that it does. And the people coming from Old Colony, as it is, are going to be really impacted to try to get on to get to 130. We keep mentioning 130. This is not 130. This is a Schumann. It is a small street. Go ahead, Lenny. I didn't yeah. need to take a point. <laughs> no, but it, it, it is, as I said, like a gentleman and my wife is saying, it's a neighborhood. And uh, we knew, we know there's been zoned for business. But that doesn't, that doesn't negate the fact that, that uh, 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 we, we live there in a neighborhood. One of the attractions, as was mentioned about, joggers and, and whatnot is, it's a one-way dead end. Uh, not a one-way, but it's a, a dead end road. Because that road used to go onto the base of the Camp Edwards. And and they blocked it off, off at one end, of course. But it's safe, so to speak. As it seems, pretty much, but not anymore. As a dead end road. Because, but still, there's traffic back and forth there. As I mentioned, there's a dog park, the, the, the going to the parks, you know, the ballpark. But, but, but it is attractive <laughs> as a dead end street. You at least know that, that somebody's not going to be doing 100 miles an hour, hopefully. Why well, are on 130? You've got to watch it. But the infrastructure of, of, of uh, uh, the town really is not really built to have these, especially coming out. I wanted to know why the driveway, the entrance exit to this business is not on 130, as the gentleman mentioned, because uh, uh, I know these, this area from front to back, and I know uh, that patch of woods there is not, it is a patch now, but uh, the animal life, of course, I think of the wildlife, the, the, the uh, uh, but now I, I noticed, it's been a while now, all of a sudden we, we walked up to the road to take a walk up Schumann, hit all these trees and knocked down and out to Schumann Road and I'm saying, what? I found out that this project is going on. Now, if this if this is, hasn't been determined yet, why are the trees? Why are some trees down? That's what I, Have I, you I, all I no, asked. Been there, noticed, looked inside the property. Why would any trees be taken down from from that area if this is something that's up for a decision? Now, if the, the the driveway is not off of Schumann, if it if it comes out onto a Schumann, it, it hooks in like a. Uh, a fish hook into the business. And I mean, that's a, that's a good distance. I can see the parking lot for that building where the lawyers are right now. And this building is going beyond that. 
Now, if you go come out of that building, and you, you're way back there, coming around like a fish hook out to a human. Now, uh, that that is going to cause, as he mentioned and my wife did too, with trucks going in and out of there. There are some 18 foot of trucks that deliver, make deliveries, not perhaps every day or every hour, but they got them in. And these people over there in 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 uh, Old Colony, that's almost directly across from the entrance exit to this business. And you're coming out, and this is a nice, nice entrance as entrance exit for that old colony. Now you're going to have big trucks coming out across the street from them. And then and, 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 and that, the uh, children, you have children, I see them all the time. Bicycles and stuff, they come out, uh, grown-ups with bicycles. We go in bicycles and go up a shoemint. You have to think of the practicality in the neighborhood and what can you do to reduce that, you know, and 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 if it were your property value and if it were your neighborhood and, and your safety and that sort of thing. We know that it's zoned for a business, but you have to also take into consideration, you know, uh, us citizens that live here and, and what we've put into it and what we've invested into it and what we deserve for safety as well. You know, yes, we know there's zoning, but can't, what can you do? We, we want the landscaping to make sure that, it, you know, it's, it, it's maintained and kept up and doesn't look like a, just like you said the big uh, square building with big trucks coming up so you can't use your street anymore and you can't you know and, and it's running right into old colony and then the traffic is like zoom and, and stuck and this is not 130 we want you to know this is a Schumann Road a residential area take please take that into consideration uh, if this goes forward and that I, I like that statement. Assuming Road, you people have been taking a lot. You got the dark park, the pickleball court. Absolutely. I go down there every Saturday <clears throat> and Sunday with my grandchildren to play sports. You have a lot of traffic already going on there. Absolutely. Road. Absolutely. I don't know why you can't look at 130 to, to come in. I, you can answer that when you come up. But and another question can't you put it up in the corner of your property? Instead of where you got the driveway, put it further up to on 130, where, you, where it says paved parking lot. So it'll be way up here. Up. Let me show you. Instead of being way down here, why don't you come right from 130 right here? You can, you can see if you can <coughs> maybe get it right away. And that way you're not interfering with all the traffic. I like to see you come on. Congestion. If you can't, you should try to come on off of this. Right, right on the corner there. And there's a spot way down here. And, you know, it's only a couple of, maybe 50 feet off of 130 or wherever it is, 100 feet to come in. Instead of being down all the way down the end of your property. I mean, I think you should take, take a look at that because I'm not going to vote for this. Show us. You did another study on this project. Good. I can't put this burden on all the people on Schumann Road in the colony. That's a, not, it's it's just way too much. Down in the town uses that road all the time. Okay, I've, I've heard you, Mr. and Mrs. Pocknett. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other abutters who wish to speak? <clears throat> Two more people. Someone come on up. Three, three people. Okay. Good evening. Joel Clifford, Old Colony Drive. What's Pre your name, sir? Joel Clifford. Oh, so Old Clifford. Okay. Yeah. I'm also the president for Old Colony Residential Can Association. Yeah. Our concerns are the pedestrian foot traffic is quite heavy on that road. Uh, we have the pickleball court, dog park. The one thing that we're forgetting about soccer and baseball that, that, that road is heavily trafficked pretty much all year long the other thing that um we need to consider there's a bus stop right at mm -hmm. old colony drive and the schumann road so i'd like the 
board to consider the entrance uh, be relocated on Route, th route 130 at some point, yep. some place. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Clifford. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Bill Campbell. Um, I am a property owner of Oak Hollow. I purchased it about five or six months ago. Top of the mark. Paid a lot of money for a small place because I love the area. It's a family area. There's kids there. What is your address, sir? It is uh, 35 a Schumann, uh, Unit 10A. And um, I have my, my as, as Dennis had mentioned, uh, grandchildren. I have a 17 month old and that was part of the motivation. My daughter lives there, the child visits, they have a swimming pool on the premises, they walk to the park, they, um, uh, there's a pickleball when I guess they get older, if they have a dog, which you can have pets, there's a dog park there. Um, the other thing I'll say is, though I'm sure they're, they're very credible and, and they, they mean what they say, but I think anything that they, they say when it comes to the size of the vehicles in and out of this proposal should be memorialized on the deed. Single use should be more memorialized on the deed and no further building on the premises, as they said, part of that wouldn't be used as residential, should be memorialized on the deed. I know when I'm doing an addition, I had to memorialize stuff on my deed in, an, in another town. So uh, that's all I want to say. And um, a full disclosure, uh, Dennis, I haven't seen you in a long time, man. It was, it was nice to see you. I'm yeah. glad to see you're still on the board. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Paul Lehman. I'm across the street on Two Birch Way, uh, so across 130. You can kind of see everybody saying move the entrance across to go out to 130. The issue is is that intersection that you can see a little blip right there of the uh, island is the entrance to our neighborhood. So th the second you move that entrance to 130, that creates a, a intersection where you have cars exiting the neighborhood, cars exiting the business. So I think that's probably the reason why that uh, Schumann was chosen i'm not i'm not an engineer but um i th that's that would be an issue probably if it does get switched to the 130 so side unless they can figure out a better entrance where it's not a four-way intersection per se um and then the other issue was is everybody's addressed is uh, um that we had is what wind deliveries are being are would be happening because Right now, we have deliveries to Landscape Express, which we've had trucks coming in there at two in the morning at times. So we talked to that owner, and it's it's not as frequent, and they've been pretty uh, pretty decent about making sure that isn't happening because he didn't even know that was happening. So that was a concern that we had because we're essentially right across the street. And then the lighting, which you guys have already brought up, if if it's going to be outdoor storage, is it going to be bright lights like you see down Echo Road? So um, that's my concern. If if the entrance was to get rerouted onto 130, where is it going to be in conjunction to that intersection as well? Got it. Because there is a crosswalk in that intersection to go across 130. So. Tell me your last name again, sir. Uh, Lehman, L-E-H-M-A-N. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Jeez. Good evening. Good My name is Antonio Brum, and I live at 96 Old Colony Drive. Have been there since 1987 when the development was first made. The issue with the traffic certainly on 130 in the town of Mashpee has increased greatly since 87. That traffic on Route 130 has become 
much more difficult to pull out onto or back into because how it backs up there because of the traffic flow on 130. So that definitely has increased. But certainly I think one point that hasn't been made is like, wow, have we really reached the point in the town of Mashby that plumbers have supplied such shoddy products that we now need two wholesale plumbing supply facilities in the same town a stone's throw away from each other. I, I just don't see why it is. The Napa store on Route 130 was vacant for quite a while. Nobody jumped on that. Easy in, easy out, and you got main ability to be on a main road to get traffic of people coming in to do business with your place. A Schumann is just not. Old Colony Drive, we have 29 homes in there. It's a big cul-de-sac. There are kids and so forth. There has been a lot more traffic on a Schumann, as we know. I can't see how this is going to be anything but just a disaster for that. I just can't believe we need that many more plumbing supply stores in the town of Mashby. I mean, what's all this stuff coming from China, really? Last a couple of years and then we got to replace it? Even building on the Cape. I mean, even in the town of Mashby. Are we building new houses like crazy? We can't keep up with pipes and sinks and so forth? It just doesn't, doesn't seem like it makes sense. I'm sure down the road where the industrial complexes are, there's got to be room down there to build something. And that's been zoned for that with practically no traffic impact. That's what I have to say. I think uh, Old Colony Estates and the Schumann Road and the residents deserve a little better than that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there any other butter? Another abutter? No. Are you an abutter? No, I'm not an But abutter. you can speak. Good evening. Joel Longinkater, Cape White Construction of the owner and the boat. I'm going to clarify for us for this gentleman. It's not a plumbing supply. It's a, a EJP Prescott is a, a drainage septic uh, a store. They have about a 12 to 15 customers a day. That's what they do. It's my company. We do septic systems. There's other companies around. That's what they use. It's not a sink or, or faucet. That's not what they sell. They sell drainage and stuff for septic system and sewer system. Uh, Chris can explain to you why in our, in our way to look at this, we love to have an interest on, on, on 130, but we can. The, the zoning, by, the zoning bylaw prohibits zoning us, by to have prohib us to do that. That's the why what, we. What section does the bylaw prohibit? Uh, I don't know the exact section. I don't know if you have it on the. Will it be like, under the C3 like, part? Yeah, but the problem yeah. is, is that when you have access, if you front on two different, if you front on 130 and then you front on another public way, yeah. the bylaw requires you to use the other public way for a driveway. So we're prohibited by your zoning bylaw from having access on 130. Well, like I asked the question, yeah. can you move? The driveway further up on the lot. Well, that would, impact the, that would impact the office buildings next door. Well, you impact the residential people. Well, yeah. I, think I, 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 I mean, I think there might, there's this misimpression that we're, you know, Batello's or Home Depot. That's not what's happening here. The, my, the, the EJ, Presco, uh, EJ Prescott is open from 7 to 4 p.m. during uh, off season, 7 to 5, and they're closed on weekends. They're not. They, they're closed on weekends, so I think some of the, that impact is mitigated by the, their operating hours. They may have two to three deliveries a day. You know, with when we're talking about this 18 wheeler, there's there's not trucks coming in and out. You know, at every hour of the day, it's just not the case. And I'm pretty confident there's a lock gate, so you're not going to be seeing people coming in at two in the morning. Uh, you know, so there's a, there will be a lock there gate. Will be a lock, there, will be a lock, there will be a lock gate that only the fire department in, will have a key to. So again, you're not going to, not like the, you know, the landscape people, you know, you're not going to see deliveries at two in the morning. Could you tell us, because we don't, un, I don't understand what this business is. What is it that you're selling that say Ferguson? Well, they don't sell resident, you know, homeowner no sinks and showers and things like that. They, they sell, you know, the large piping that you would put in for water services, uh, septic, uh, you know, sewer lines, things drainage. like that, drainage. 
you know, so they're selling. Like, would Robert B. Hour be one of your customers? Correct, yes. Yeah, they deal with contractors. You know, so again, we, you know, we, you know, if we could have done 130, I think that would be preferable. But the by, your bylaw does not allow us to do that. And again, I think the operating hours, you know, do mitigate, you know, some of those concerns. They're not open on weekends, so you're not going to see, you know, consumers, uh, contractors, or deliveries on the weekends. And you know, as far as the, you know, we're over 250 feet from a from a Schumit, as far as site and things of that nature. And again, that dark green is all natural vegetation. So I think we've done a good job of trying to, you know, protect the uh, the visibility of the building. Again, we are going to comply with all your night sky, dark sky, you know, photometrics and things of that nature. Where would the outdoor uh, storage area be again? Right in this area here. On the back of the building. So would it wouldn't be abutting any residential property. It would be abutting the landscape company. Any other public comment? Yes, sir. I just, just come up because you need to get to the microphone. I'm probably not enough. <laughs> uh, Bill Campbell again. Um, we just heard that it's typically not going to be pickup trucks. They're going to be 18 wheelers. This is large stuff coming in. Everybody knows what septic system, uh, concrete, uh, you know tanks and piping look like. The diffusers. Well, it's, 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 gonna, be, it's gonna be a huge impact. And, uh, and the storage, too. I mean, it, it's, I don't know. I remember when it was a VFW. Or, that's all. Okay. Anyone else? All right, thank you. I'm thinking that we should continue this public hearing Next time, you want to say something more, Chris? Yeah, I mean, again, I just want to reiterate that we're, we're building in a commercial zone, you know, so I think that has to be taken into account. And again, there may be, you know, two to three de deliveries with 18 wheels, but most of it will be pickup. And again, you're not, it's not this impact, you know, of like a Patello's or a Home Depot or something like that. You're not going to have people, homeowners coming in and out, you know, like where you have those high impacts. So, you know, and again, the, the operating hours, they are not open on the weekends. And, you know, it's basically seven to, seven to four, seven to five. Um, what would be the reason for the continuance? What, what information are you still looking for from us? I, I think perhaps the reason is um, I'd like to think about this and read everything over again. Um, I, I, I don't know. It, you know, I know what's going on with Robert B. Hour because I see it in Hyannis. Will big pipes, will big pipes be going out of your facility? Will Robert B. Hour be coming to you for piping? Um, it would, you know, I, again, you know? I can let them speak to that, you know, but they may come there to pick up material, yes. The pipe Robin did be out to get it to do, get, do the system doesn't come from this store, coming from the manufacturer. They're buying. Okay, so but I'm asking, would Robert be our, as, a, as an example, would it be coming to pick up those? That yeah, so it, it's a, uh, I think um, the miss of, uh, 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 understanding here is that they, they don't have like a, a, a it's not a, a, a tractor trailer come every day to deliver something. They, if they, if Robbie be out of going in there, they're going to pick up truck to take, get feedings or get a, a hay bale or, or something like that. It's not coming, like we, we do septics ourselves. We go there to get pipe, PVC pipe it, or, or infiltrators and stuff like that. We don't get, if we're going to get a, a deliver for a, a, a 100 feet or, or 200 feet of pipe, come from someplace else. It doesn't come from them. And that's the difference. It's a, like, again, what Chris said, that's not a Home Depot store. It's not a, I understand it's not it's not a convenience Depot. store, yeah. you know, not a plumbing store. It's not JD we the dairy. That. Right. Yeah. Yes. It's like, like what, the, what do you do, um, pump stations? No, 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 no. They don't. The uh, pump station is done by uh, it's concrete. That's it's completely oh, different. Yeah, the, yeah. The concrete. Yeah, it's completely different. Yes. Yeah, I think we should continue this. I mean. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's ask how many people would. would That's my last one more question. Go ahead. So there's no way you can move that driveway, even at the end of the pavement down Schumann Road. I mean. I think what do you mean, like? Dennis, can you show us where you... you uh, I'll show you what I need. Mean. Uh, 
You can't, I, I like to see it up here. It's like, oh, what about right here? Well, this is somebody else's property. I mean, you can't, you can't take it out. Well, you can't do that. You gotta have the, to have a right will, you have setbacks and all that. So it doesn't work. Right. You, know, you can't go against the by law to, you know what I mean? Okay, and put it here in your property. What's the, what's the. Because you're not coming out all totally there. The, all the house is there. They're trying to right here. What's the setback for driveway? Really, no setback for driveway. Um, well, I, I, I like to see you think about that, though. I, I, I have to take the public driveway to the side. Yeah. Right. All right. We're going to continue right. the public. Yeah. Madam Chair, the, the the location of that driveway is right now. <coughs> Rob, can you show? Can you point where the? I'm looking at a map. Pick it I'm up, please, so we could all see it. Yeah. I'm looking. I'm, have, I'm just going to pick up this plan. You, you yeah. Have Lotus map here that might. I'm show looking that. at the zoning map, right? I'm looking at your at the GIS system um, on on town. <coughs> the entrance to Old Colony Drive is actually to the right of their their driveway. Yeah. Yeah. The trucks have to go by it. So if you move it towards the corner of his driveway, so the corner of his property, <coughs> it's going to be directly opposite it. The closer we move to that way, the closer it would be worse. It it would be okay. It would just be <coughs> right in front of it. It'd be right opposite it. I didn't know I would, that. I would like it. I would like it to be. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, if if the if the board se se seeks to continue, I would recommend you all go out there and take a look at. I it. would like to do that. Take a look at the intersection, um, and also you know familiarize yourself with where that 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 bus stop is. I I don't. No. Where is that bus stop? Just if you can describe it, because I think I know. Just, Old it's, Old Colony and Schumann. Okay. So there may be a spot at the end of Old Colony, you know, obviously twice a day, right, where the bus will pick up children and then drop them off. And you would likely want to restrict uh, deliveries during that period. Yes. And we do that all the time. We did it all the time for projects, <laughs> And right? that could be a condition. Right. So that would definitely be something you want to consider. But I, uh, right this minute, the width of, of, of a Schumann Road there and the amount of traffic we're talking about adding, I, I, don't, I don't really see a major safety problem. I do recognize that people will be walking from the condominium <coughs> complex, potentially with dogs and so on, going down to play pickleball, but they're not generally walking towards Route 130. Some may, but they're not generally doing that. So I would be concerned if it was on the other side of I'm sorry, Ocalo. I'd be concerned if it was on the other side of Ocalo, then, then they'd certainly have even a stronger case. But in general, when we do design for traffic concerns, we want to use the existing traffic network that's in place. Mm -hmm. So it's a better idea to use the intersection at Route 130, even though I, I'm in favor of the access from Route 130, it's a better idea to use the intersection, the existing in intersection where Schumann Road meets 130. That's a common access. That's already designed for a certain site distance. It's safe site distance there. It doesn't affect Birch Street across the street. I'm sorry, Birch Way across the street. Um, it won't, won't, con won't add another conflict that potentially could exist there. There's no easy, the, every, every, each, each selection you make, there's a, there's a, the there's a conflict to deal with, right. right. So which one is the, is the lesser um, impact is the one I think you need to just evaluate. It, the vehicles that go in for deliveries, are they normally large vehicles? No, they have a, what they have, they have a one, one ton truck. That's what they okay, do. One they, ton yeah, truck. Yeah. Right. They get in delivery. You don't have any truck or trailers? -wheelers. No, they don't have. The, there's no, no, they don't have. There may they, be deliveries they, with they an 18 wheeler. Maybe a delivery an 18 wheeler, but it, if we, it's not a, they don't deliver, it's, they don't take material to it's us. A, it's a panel a, truck. It's a van or a panel truck. It's yeah, a, no, it's I was a talking about the delivery truck. truck. Yeah, yeah they'll, they'll probably get a delivered with an 18 wheeler truck. No question okay, about it. Right, but again, yeah. not. Not on the hour, every hour, maybe two. No, no, two no. I'm just going to make sure I, yeah. I understand. Yeah, no, I understand. I don't want to cause any confusion. The vehicles that drop yeah. things off are sure. going to be the yeah. large vehicles. Correct, yeah. Right. Well, I think we should t uh, we should uh, do a site I'm visit. about to do that. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I, will everyone go down there and take a look? Oh, yeah, I'd yeah. go down there. And, and, I, and I would just ask counsel, if you would, Chris, if you would please 
write something up on the conflict with allowing access on Route 130, just so the board sees that in sure. writing. Absolutely. I just started looking at it online real quick, yeah. just when you mentioned it, and I, I, yeah. I, I see where it is, I just got to study it. Yeah, well, that's fine. I can provide that to the board. Is there, if we're going to continue, is there anything else that the board would like to see from me or the applicant on this? I, I would, uh, referring to your, the Lotus map, the long drive coming across on this side with the, what appears to be very unified small lots with a, a one straight road. Can you explain what that is? Okay. That's Johnson Road. That's Johnson Road. It's an unbuilt subdivision. On you're tiny looking, you're lots? Look, are you looking at th those? It's a, yeah. it's a town land. It's unbuilt it's just land. It's, it's it, they a, show the it, little lots, but it's it not a forest area? It's a it's town one. It's a, yeah. right. It's a subdivision that has not been built. Yeah. I would have to research it with the town planner and, and board for you. Basically, not there's an no issue there's here. nothing there today yeah. or tomorrow. It doesn't mean there won't be something <laughs> there tomorrow. I'm just what saying. Is the the what is the, the zoning? Residential? Residential? Yes, it's all residential. Yeah, it's all residential. Yeah. Yeah. It's, all residential. Yeah. it's small lots. It looks like it was done a long time ago. It was never constructed, okay. and it's quite a few lots. It's probably 40 lots. <laughs> 30, but I think that 30, what, what 30 something Joel's lot. saying is that the town owns the land. So the it's it's the not land. privately owned that you could see a subdivision. Okay. Um, I think we have to look at this a butter's petition. They called it a butter's petition that Mohammed Fad <laughs> spoke about. That's why I would like to continue this to the we go and have a site visit, we read all this information again, and then we make our decision next time. Okay. Agreed. Could I, I have a motion, I'd like please? I'd we continue the public hearing in two weeks, or should we that be enough time for everybody to get out there? Look? I think uh, so. We need to have a time for that. Let's see. A, a time. Uh, so. what? We it's did have it scheduled for, I think it would be scheduled for April. Well, let's see what the... What's your next available April meeting? April 17. April 17 at 7. At 7, 10 p.m. At 7, 10. Second. Right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, everybody, right, for your thank time. You. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta take a break. Okay, we're gonna take a five minute re a, a five minute recess. Do you need to take a five minute recess? Yes. <laughs> Make it five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs>
they you can't, can't involve, involve him. And even though I know he wants to help, but no, no, he can't. I know that. Yeah. I mean, would it be fair to ask Ed to meet us down there? Absolutely. I mean, I, we really don't understand the whole layout there. It happens all the time. But I didn't know was there's a. Yeah. And as soon as I walked out on the Shiva Road and saw old call me across the street, I went, oh, oh, no. I, was was so so I knew there would be some comment, but um, yeah. I don't know anything about the, the, the bus stop. So I, yeah. I still don't think that's a major issue, but yeah. that's certainly a question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like to Do we have to leave? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to say, I'll see me in the water. You're going to be? The next week, but I'll, I'll zoom in. All right. From the beach. Okay, I'm going to take a break <laughs> myself. You're going to kill me. <laughs> Just FYI, though, we do have already have a 710 public hearing on April 17th, so I'll have to adjust the time on the agenda. Well, well what, what is do, the agenda? What, no, wait a minute. You, yeah, if you have two at the same time, you just post them at the same time. And just note it in there. And you, you, you can't open it. Wait a minute. I you have New Seabury Homes. Yeah. At 7.15 and right. 7.20. We have a 7.10 for the zoning article public here. Right. So you can't open it before, but you can open it after that. Even if it's one. It's a big yeah. freaking stress ball. I know where it is. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's because we need a sub-public hearing day tonight. Uh, seven lot subdivision. Small room. Another phase or some sort? Outside of the UC, we spent a lot of time picking sand cows. What else is on that list? Yeah, we have um, the, at 710, the public. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's one. We have. Is there another one? You've got. Why don't you, you come back to this kind of weather? Tree, tree by law. Tree by law. Uh, so the old, there is already one established, though, at 710. You know, All right, so we have two at 710, um, right, already. And then you want to set a public hearing, two public hearings on. Oh, that, that's, if you can get a flight pretty cheap, right? As long as you're not hey, you can't make any right? comments about the proposed zoning by law? Okay. Maybe we should do yeah. that first. Yeah, I've never seen that. Then we can get that out of the way, and then you and I can go back up. Yeah. yeah, right, right. Thanks for throwing in. Hey, sir. remember yeah, I told well, you yeah. I saw that game yeah. over the park one? So are you, are you around on the side? Fishing hat. Fishing hat. I, okay, I looked it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I saw. I'm trying to be here. Yeah, you know, so those who eat, they change oh, yeah. their They're vicious. <laughs> What's this one, we might need you. Have you seen it since then? What do you think of our... Um, from the Cape, where I'm you know, down here, every once in a while, you jump on a bus. We come to this time. That's true. Takes you right to your gate. Before we even the And I travel like I work short all the time anyways. No. Holy and then smokes. If we're going to lose that zero of interest, we'll see 40 people again. I almost died. I saw Ed, what was it, a year ago in Yarmouth. I'm like, what? That $75 dollar sounded good to me. Years ago, I was on the sword. It's a very, it's a very good board because it's got a lawyer who used to And we were doing the sword. We just got, we just got He's up to $35. Oh, good. Yeah. That was 15 How years How is the board of health? Okay. They were very easy. Yeah, okay. but they're sending only $35. I don't know how that can be. I was there. I was in Because the, the person that was there for like 35 years retired. Uh, and do you, you don't know what I mean. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Do you think is it the uh, building with six contractor beds mm -hmm. and, um, and a holding tank? That's what we buy. That's what we buy. I had to get a license to store hazardous materials and a water protection booth. Really, those are the only interest in that area of town. So that's all. I will never do that to myself. <laughs> Three hours to the day. But thank you. Wow. They have, oh, yeah. They have the license requires them to have an engineer check no. that system. I was told. 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 I was told.
I mean, if Carl is just, I mean, really, no question. But the thing is, when you need, when you need, to, when you need to look something, up, when you need to look something up, like good, from 20 years ago, you're like, oh, it's oh. <laughs> they're very. The, the building inspector, he's really good to deal with. Yeah. But he's also very detailed. Yeah, Mark is. Good. Are you going to have this problem? Have to worry about that. Write it down. Write it down. <laughs> okay, let's get going. Got a lot to go. Oh. <laughs> okay, are we, we got everyone, uh, Rob? Steve, Rob. Uh, okay, meeting time. Coming back. Madam Chair, could you just, um, take the matter of the date you'd like to do the site visit? Okay, um, we were talking about taking a site visit at uh, 474 Main Street, and um, Ed will meet us there if we can all come up with a certain date. Uh, what, what date would Maybe be- Maybe I already know what date. What date would be convenient for you, Ed? So, um, we probably want to wait till the massive weather pattern re oh, leaves yes. this week. That would be a good idea. Right. <clears throat> and um, I just bought a pair of boots. Any, <laughs> any morning, um, any morning actually next week will probably work, I would say, somewhere Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday is, is good and Wednesday is good at this point. Thursday what is. What time? A, um, I would suggest 9 o'clock. So oh, if we could go. How is Monday with, at 9 a.m. for yep. people? Uh, people uh, he works. So up, uh, upcoming Monday the 8th. At what time? <laughs> I, I'm heading towards the Eclipse Party in Kenny Bugport, so I can, I mean, I can, yeah, Let's I'll make see. 9 o'clock. When, right. when, I was going to say, when are you going to be back? I'm, I'm going to come back on Tuesday, but <laughs> I'm just going to be there for the night. We've conventionally posted an agenda for your site visits. I just need 48 hours notice to do you that. You have to post an agenda? Yeah. So it has to be on a meeting? <clears throat> Since more than two of you are meeting, it's a public meeting by right. It has to be notif notified. Can we, do, oh. can we do a Wednesday morning? Does that work for everybody? Well, how are you, how are you gonna oh, post it on the agenda? You can't. I don't need an Karen, agenda. I just Karen can. Karen, Karen Leslie. Post it on the agenda yeah. for Wednesday You just Wednesday need to make Tuesday? an agenda and post it. It has right. to be oh, publicly posted. noticed. Okay, you're not talking about That's on a That's correct, meeting an agenda, agenda for your site walk. That's okay. all it is. I do mean a meeting agenda for the site walk. Right. And so whatever that date is should be provided to Karen and she'll take care of it for you, but we need my office would need 48 hours to do that for you. So, so Wednesday's safer, but you still have. Well, what about the following week before? Yeah. So Monday can happen. I'm just saying, uh, Karen, that would be the, I would need to let her know that first thing in the morning. So that's be posted before 9 a.m. on a Thursday. Uh, I'll go on my own. I don't have to go with you. You guys can go. I'll go Sunday. I'll go Tuesday. I'll get back. It's up to you. The following week works as well. That following that's Monday the 15th. That's we might get some good weather. Maybe. Patriots day. That's Patriots Day. You can't. Well, fifteenth. So now the fifteenth is Patriots Day, though. It's Monday. That's a Monday. Yeah. I mean, seventeenth is the planning board meeting. Uh, so I'd rather you get it. Get it this week. Before the the the, the previous week, so you have time to, to think about it before oh, your meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So Wednesday the tenth will work. I'm good. Nine o'clock. Wednesday, April ten. April tenth at nine o'clock. Nine a.m. Okay. I said that the ninth, right? Site visit. We'll just ninth historical meeting. <coughs> yes, Tuesday. Right. You have a historical meeting? Tuesday, no. yeah. This is Wednesday. Huh? He said you, Wednesday. No, can you help me with the that right I person at the Wednesday. education okay. at the school department about the the bus stop? I'd like to have that. Oh, there we go. Are you going to be here Wednesday? Apparently at the yeah, Wednesday. I have to okay, recuse great. myself. I think because oh, that's right. right. You might tell us something that might impact our yeah, Wednesday's good. Yeah. Okay, it's Wednesday. Wednesday it is. In the bus route. Yeah. Okay, Wednesday at, 10, at 9 o'clock. Wednesday the 10th at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, we're at new business, and we are going to vote <clears throat> to set a public 
hearing date for an application for <coughs> approval of a definitive plan and approval of an accompanying special permit submitted by New Seabury Homes, LLC, to subdivide six parcels into seven new lots at property address as off the western sideline of Great Oak Road between Red Brook Road and Sips Road, map 110, parcels 58, 59, 80, 82, 83, and 97. <coughs> Public notice, hearing notice. Pursuant to no, Massachusetts. You don't need to read it, Karen. I just, I, um, you don't need to read it. I don't. Oh, you're right. You don't I don't need, need to read, read it because we're just setting the, the date for I mean, the yeah, vote. So I've suggested May 1st at 7.15 and 7.20, 7.20 and 7.25. Um, 7.15 and 7. Just bear in mind on that May 1st meeting date. May 1st. Um, Do we have a target? No, I don't think Is so. that good? That's good. All um, right. I'll be asking you again to, for the tree bylaw public hearing actually to send it on May 1st as well. We'll get to that. Okay. So 715 and 720 May 1st. Yes, that works. So it would be the definitive sub plan and then the cluster. We would do the special permit hearing first and then follow with the definitive. Okay. May I have a vote? So moved. With that. It's an early voting, voting day. day. Do we have this room? Okay, we I'll have, have the room, I think. Um, I'll have to follow up. Okay. All right. I Do have we not have been a vote? Told not that we won't be in this room. Right. Okay. No. So somebody made the motion. Did you make the motion? I made the motion, Dennis. Second. Second. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. But that Evan's going to make sure we can use this room, though, right? I'll confirm. Yeah. Okay, the next one is the same kind of thing. Vote to set a public hearing date to establish the fee schedule for tree permits and certificates of exemption as required by Mash B General Bylaw Chapter 175, Tree Preservation. I had initially intended to ask you to set this for April 17th, oh, I have... but I need two weeks to put it in the newspaper, which I haven't yet. Okay. So I'm suggest you put it in for May 1st and I'll have to put it on another press release. Okay, I, I'll pass this out for people just if they're interested in the tree bylaw to just know what the schedule is because you set up a bunch of Zooms and things. Yeah, just you know? Q&As. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've had a lot of interest in private meetings as well. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Pass me down. Let's see, do I have enough? Yeah. Okay, so um, let's see. I thought you had some time for that. You have it at. Um, so it'll be May 1st at what time? May 1st uh, at. 7 uh, 05 or 7 25 or 7 30. May 1st. Any of the above would work. Yeah. So, uh, do that May 1st. 7 05. This will be. It's 7 05. This will be quick. It'll be quick. Yeah. It's just a. Yeah, uh, yeah okay. I make a motion. I have a motion, the, please. So moved, May 1st, 7 05. Second. Second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. New business, 275 Quinnaquisset Avenue, deliberation and potential vote on the application submitted by Southworth Mashby Properties, LLC, to modify the Willow Bend Country Club special permit. So, Madam Chair, should we start off? I think we maybe should take a motion affirming that, you know, the information that was provided during public comment tonight is, is the board's not going to put it into the public record and not uh, consider it during deliberations or decision making. Okay. I'll tell second that. So Why I make that motion yeah. if you'll accept that motion. Yes. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, Unanimous. We don't want the public record that was sent, brought forth tonight to be in the record. Right. <clears throat> I'd like some clarification on that at some time. Certainly. Thank you. Um, all right. So we're at Quinnaquisset. So 
what I'm understanding, we're, tonight we're going to review the draft special permit modification decision that, that uh, town planner drafted. And if it still stands, you do, you do not want us to, you, you're recommending we not close it out tonight because we should have a town council look at it, make sure there's nothing missing, uh, and perhaps vote next time. Well, I, I did provide the draft as you have it to council. He yeah. did reply uh, within the past 24 hours with edits that were non-substantive in nature. It was mostly word choice and some grammatical issues. I would say nothing substantive, nothing identified in the draft decision that he noted as being potentially problematic from a legal perspective. Um, I wrote the decision uh, in consideration of the record um, that has been developed over the past year uh, for your review and consideration. Um, and so, yeah, that's essentially it. I believe this the decision is um, a very solid starting place to frame your discussion and deliberations, but by no means is a, a be-all, end-all. Uh, I wanted to make sure that um, all of the bases with, were covered with regard to any findings one this board would need to make in accordance with the zoning bylaw um, and be as uh, clear as is possible uh, relative to the data presented and the data received and um, the issues identified and the proposed mitigation offered to um, mitigate impacts from some of the issues identified. Um, I say the, the decision is relatively complete but needs your review okay. and, and notably um, I would point the board uh, towards the uh, required findings under okay. the zoning bylaw you need to make which are enumerated in condition or excuse me finding O um, section 174.24c2 of the zoning bylaw um, that is the stat you know the that is the local criteria with which you are empowered to authorize or not authorize special permits and any modifications of said permits. Okay, um, all right. So page one, uh, we know what the proposal that Willowbend asked, so I don't need to, we don't need to go over that. Um, and this is all part, this first page is a lot of history and you know what, what was done and uh, going to page two, we have the chronology of events. The special permit modification was filed by the town clerk to the, with the town clerk in February 1, 2023. The hearing was open for the Mashpee Planning Board on March 1, 2023. Notice given to Butters and all. And March 20th, we voted to close the hearing. And we're here today to discuss the findings and vote on, I will, We'll go through each finding and vote on mm -hmm. each finding. And mm -hmm. when I say vote, we're talking about the veracity of that finding. Isn't that what we're saying? This is a correct. I think it's important that the board develop consensus on each required finding you're supposed to make um, so that the decision can incorporate or not incorporate the finding. Or if, um, so if like a 3-2 vote were to come down in any specific finding, we would retain it in the draft. <laughs> So um, what you're saying is we should vote, we should look at the finding and make a decision whether we feel this should be incorporated in this special? Or propose an alternative finding of okay. fact if you feel it's inaccurate in consideration of the record. Okay. All right. The first finding is something that, you know, we don't, we do not know if it's correct. The proposed modification involves less than 10% increase in the area of any use and is therefore under the provisions of section 17424C9D of the zoning bylaw, subject to the dimensional and other relevant provisions as existed on November 6, 1985, the date on which a preliminary subdivision plan was filed on the property, freezing the zoning in effect at the time that this special permit was originally issued, April 15, 1987. Uh, at that time, the property was in an R3M zoning district. This subdivision is proposed under the cluster subdivision zoning regulations applicable to the project on that date. I ask you, Evan, <clears throat> what, uh, how do you, how did you arrive at that the modification uh, is less so than 10%? We're not, we can't take in new information. Remember that. You know what I mean? He, it, 
You know, it, we have to be really careful. So this we is can't. supposed to be a deliberation between the five of us at this right. point. So you can't keep going back to somebody who's not in that group because we're going to get in trouble. Well, didn't it, since he wrote to the final, right. like, we, we can take we ask this. We asked him to, and we can take this. And I would just note that but, I cite the zoning bylaw section in that file. Yeah, can we have to, to be it. careful about that. <coughs> We've already been called on that. Um, no, why, why, why don't you ask the board members if they have any questions? No, well, that's my next question. Yeah, because if we no, if we all no, agree no, with that finding, no, no. okay, let's go through this. If we um, all agree on the finding and we don't need see. to take any more information from our staff, can Dale speak on this? Even though he is not okay. All right, let's start with Rob. Do you have any? Uh, which way? Which one are we on? Four A. That's the one we just read. 4A, okay. okay which I have no I problem guess. with that one. No, I don't either. I don't either. I just I, want to I, note that the last sentence is, shouldn't be included. It's related to, uh, it's a subdivision related sentence that I pulled from a former permit that should be stricken. <laughs> okay. So just uh, delete that last sentence. This subdivision is proposed under the cluster subdivision zoning regulations applicable to the project on that date. Correct. Okay. Not a subdivision. Okay. No, 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 uh, <clears throat> no, no, no issue. No issue. Okay. Dale. Okay. No you. issue. I'm fine with it. Okay. So do we need to file, do a motion to approve this? No. Okay, so <laughs> we're, we're okay no. with 4A. Yeah. Okay, B. The proposed modification lies outside of the original project area, but within the project area as expanded by vote of the planning board in Willow Bend special permit modification number 27 pursuant to section 17424C9G of the zoning bylaw increasing said area to 330.14 acres in Mashby and 3.39 acres in Barnstable. I might this have stay to in the special permit. So I'm just trying to think. Like this is carried on form uh, permit too. I think this needs to be. Um, this is right. So to 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 opine on that. I'd have to look at the public record that's on our website. Um, the special permit, including special permit 27, is um, is on the website, so we can consult that. I I don't think that I don't think that that's um, yeah, relevant to this um, to this modification. Well, I don't know why we would have to go into all this because we know what the issues are, and I don't. I agree that this is not. I think we can strike that. Okay, I I'm, I'm for striking that. How do you feel, Mike? It's fine with me. Fine with me. Strike, Dale. Strike. Okay, so no on that one. C, under the provisions of section 9.3 and 9.4 of the applicable 1985 zoning bylaw, a minimum of 92 acres of open space was required within the original project area. Current open space is 237.9 acres, well in excess of the required acreage. I don't think that's relevant either. Well, it's not relevant. But I mean, it's relevant for sure. We need to find that the project doesn't derogate from the original permit. Right. So the, the sh you should you need to make sure that you need to maintain the you need to maintain you need to continue establishing the fact that this project or any modification therein is isn't derogating from the original special permit conditions. Right. Let, me, let me read this again. They needed a minimum, and they've got two thirty-seven, so they're fine. That particular <laughs> issue. So Willow, Willow Bend or any multifamily project. Okay, this um, is new information. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, I, it's, not, it's, not, it's not our fault that this wasn't brought to us. Um, nine, three, and nine, four. 
open space. So the, the 1985 zoning is part of our um, public record and it's on our website. Public record. Open space multifamily development. An open space multifamily development may be allowed in our 3M and R4 zoning district in accordance with the following procedures and standards. So to, to vote on that, I, I would have to look at, which is public record, um, I would have to look at the, the special permit as amended. And that is going to have to wait till the next time. I meant that over all those times become if I amend it, right? Yeah, I, I would have to look at the public record. Yeah, good idea. I don't think it's that that we just can put on hold. With current open space in as 237.9 acres is well in excess of the required acreage, would that be sufficient? I think that it I think that that in previous special permit modifications and I don't have all the special permit modifications with me. I believe that's in them. I believe it's true, but I didn't. I don't. I don't think that we should vote on it without me doing a fact check for okay, the. Okay, but I'm asking if that, that were the only sentence in Section C, would that be sufficient, or are we missing something? I believe you need to identify the criteria with which that determines it, the acreage is. I, I can. Adequate. We can do that with the the public record materials that we have. It's just I don't have them with me right now, and I don't want to go on the website because then I'm looking. Like, I, I don't have those materials in paper right now. Okay. All right, then we'll hold on that. Just hold on that Almost. one. Yeah. Okay with that? Yeah. I believe it's correct, Karen. I just want to double check. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. D, under the 1985 special permit, the project would have been allowed 341 residential units and was permitted for 338 units. In 91, the permit was modified to reduce the total number of units to 287. The current proposal increases the number of approved units to 285 out of 287 maximum allowed units, which the board finds permissible to be permissible under section 17424C9F as it is less than the original allowed 338 units and less than the currently allowed 287 and hereby approved said increase. I understand everything and agree with it where it starts in 1991 to the end of that. Um, I do not know what the special permit would have allowed in, 1880, in 1985. Okay, so with respect to number of units, yes. Well, it, it I think was in the in in 1987 it was 338 units. Well, it's 1985 is what we have to figure. 341 it says. 341 residential units, but permitted for 338. Yep. That 338 is correct. That's correct. I should clarify: the permit was issued in 87. But submitted the application. Submitted okay, in we should probably change that to under the uh, a, permitted in <laughs> under the 1987 special permit. That always bugged me. Thank you. Under the 19, oh, so change the 85 to 1987. Correct. A special permit was reduced. Well, the number she said in 87 was 343. Was uh, yeah. 338. I can confirm 338. Okay. Oh, okay. In 1991, it was modified the total number to. 287, well, that's we know correct. that. E everything is right, as far as I know, except I don't know. If 338 is right, then it's correct on the last sentence. But its question is, was 340 residential units in sentence one, is that correct? I don't know. I don't have it in my notes. <sighs> it's correct. That's what would have been allowed under the maximum build-out of the bylaw. Okay. Okay, and we approved 338, and so okay. therefore this, this, this is accurate. I, I hear what you're saying. Thank I'm, you. I'm reading it. Um, so this is accurate. So I can, I can double you're check. Confirm, I, can, so I can confirm 341. Okay. So we'll say hold this, except confirm. Okay. Confirm 341. So you're confident with the, uh, the current proposal increases the number of, a, yes, of yes, approved units? Yes, I am. Okay. 
We know what's happened. I don't know the history that well. So just we need to confirm the number 341. Right. Okay. Okay. But All those in favor? Just, just a clarification. Says the current proposal increases the number of approved units to 285 out of 287. That's a decrease in my mind. No, because there's currently 274. So maybe we, it would need to be noted that there are currently 274 in the project. So I was saying it's still all be under information the, uh, contemplated under part the, of the record. But you're deliberating with us. Please give us space. I'm sorry, Evan. Um, so you're, 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 no, the whole, you're not the whole time. With that? This is what's been happening. There would be a lot of 287, but we increased it to 285. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. It was 274 below. So. Right. A, we have 285. It's a decrease of the increase. <laughs> you don't like the language? It, it was just confusing. It, it looks like you were increasing a number smaller than. So do you think it should number. be the current the proposal the totals number of approved units. the number of approved units to 285? That would be. Okay. Yeah. So instead of increases, totals. What, and, and cancel out the rest of that sentence? No. He doesn't like the word increase. Subject him to the word increase. So the current pro proposal increases the total Ed, number of Ed, you not, we're deliberating. Please. Okay. Re really, you, you, we've had fights about all of this. People interjecting. We just need to deliberate the five of us, please. I've been waiting eight months to do this. Thank you. All right, so what do you want to do? We can do? do this. The five of us can, can do this. What do you want to do? Well, you can request. No, Ed, please. Please, Ed. Okay, else. Ed, please. Oh, all right, let, let's get the rules straight here. You, Mary, you, you know the rules better yes. than anybody else. We've closed the public saying? meeting. We're deliberating. The five of us get to deliberate. Please. We don't get to take any more information in. That's it. We close the public That's area. it. And what happens is we start to just have these discussions and we start to go into this gray zone. Let's see if we can handle this, the five of us, okay, without interjections. Let's just see. Right. I know it's hard, but the five of us can do this. We can do this. You can do this, but we are here to provide clarification. Thank you. But what, what, is, what does that mean, clarification? You can't you have give us related questions. That's why I'm That's here. new information. That's deliberation. The five of us are related. the planning board. We need to deliberate. I don't understand. But right. Of quiet. course you don't. I will be quiet. Okay. Thank you. In your town, right. you can run to be on the on the planning board and you can talk whenever you want. All right, Mary. I have an opportunity. Right, Thank you. Please, please speak politely. That's, but that's if they, they, they won't voice. be quiet, Karen, please. Don't raise your voice. Please, Mary. That's we don't like okay. that. Please. I, we're, we'll Thank we'll you. follow your rule, Thank your you. idea, your understanding, because I don't I, know the rule. I really appreciate that, Karen. I super, I really appreciate that. Okay, if this is the way it really is, it is. then I accept this. This is the way it is. So let's go back to... Well, I guess, um, I, we're, the five of us are deliberating, but if we need clarification, that's not, a, it's just clarifying what we're trying to well, do. But if I can clarify based on the public records, let's just do it that way and let's keep it clean. Well, then I think let's just be polite and not tell anybody to shut up then, okay? I, let's just do it. This the way is we a rule, do it. Michael. I'm not telling anybody to shut up. Let's go on. This is how, this okay. is a you legal were the one just process. Yelling for a just, just, right. just, just let me just get one thing. All right, clear. let's call, let's move real, on. Real quick, need... and I'm not going to drag this out either because I don't want to. The clarification. What is the definition of clarification? If we ask, we we can't ask what the what the what the 87 special permit said. Let's see if we can handle it ourselves first. <laughs> you guys can go home. Well, <laughs> well, I, I, what, 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 I'm happy to leave if you prefer that. Uh, Seriously, if you right. keep interrupting, I will ask the chair to, 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 for order. All right. Okay. Um, we'll, I'll go along with you, Mary, and, and I guess you're the one who's going to be looking up these questions. Is that a fair statement? From our public records. From our public records with documentation that shows I, us. I can bring the documentation okay. in. Absolutely. All right. You then, all have it. You all have access to it. It's on our website, but I will print it out for you. Okay. 
All right, so we're going to hold on D except to confirm 341. We're at E now, and <clears throat> under the 85 permit, which was affirmed in 91, special permit modification, the project is allowed no more than 853 bedrooms within the project area. Correct. The planning board finds and the applicant acknowledges that there are currently more than 853 bedrooms in the project area and were at least 855 on August 2nd to 2023 as calculated by the town planner. I know that we are currently more than 853. I don't know what was available at 8 on August 2nd. Can you look that up, Mary? Yeah, it's 855. It is 855? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, utilizing assessor's data and building department records. The planning board finds that the applicant is not in compliance with this condition of the special permit and has established a new series of conditions to mitigate the impacts of the additional bedrooms in existence and planned, including this application. Those conditions are outlined below in section five condition. So those are the mitigation, the proposals, plans. So I'm fine with that whole thing. Any objection to yes. paragraph E? Yep, I think it should end at um, the planning board finds that the applicant is not in compliance with the conditions of the special permit P, period. And then this other phrase should be placed elsewhere. I don't think it should be combined. I see what you're saying. I do, I do agree. I do agree, because that, that's superfluous. I mean, yeah, well, it'll be said somewhere else. You're going to put that... You're going to put that under conditions. Um, yeah, it'll be under, um, let's see. Let me see where that goes. Yeah. Like the sentence yeah, will be the planning board. It's on page yeah. six, somewhere in that area. Yeah. Okay, so so it's going to read as, it's, as it is written on the page here, except we will strike... Move. Uh, we will uh, we will we'll strike from E mm -hmm. and has established a new series of conditions to mitigate the impacts of the additional bedrooms in existence and plan, including this application. These conditions, those conditions are outlined below in section five. So all that is stricken and it will go over. Under I think into section five. Yeah. Okay. All those supporting that. Yep. Yep. Everyone yep. agree. Yep. Yes. Yes, no. yes, okay, agreed. Number F, letter F. The project satisfies the requirements of Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A in that it complies with the general purpose and intent of the Mesh Rezoning Bylaw on the applicable dates. Yes, once we know the dates or if we have a date so issue. I'm, I'm not going to vote in favor of that. Okay, why? Um, because it doesn't, it doesn't comply with um, Chapter 40A because it doesn't comply with our zoning bylaws. Um, because you can't make a finding, you can't make a finding on this um, where, um, now my papers are all messed up, sorry. Okay, take it, take it word by word and tell me why okay. you can't agree. So section, section 174.24c2 mm -hmm. says that special permits may be approved only if the proposed use or development is consistent with applicable state and town regulations, dot, 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 will not significantly decrease. Uh, yeah, I know that whole. Sur surface water and quality. I'm going to mm -hmm. keep going, though will not have sufficient adverse impact on wildlife, habitat, estuarine systems, will not destroy or disturb any historic or archaeological sites. So, I'm st so now I'm starting to, to see that we're deliberating. I don't think this project, we can find that it's in compliance with Chapter 40A or the general in intent of the, Mas of the Mashpee zoning bylaw because it's not consistent with that two regulations, one being the special permit itself, because it's violated the bedroom cap, and the next one is it's not, in, it's not consistent with the flow neutral bylaw. That's another regulation it's not in compliance with. 
Also, we can't find that the project will not destroy or disturb historic or archaeological sites. I tried to keep that open for that research, um, but we do have well, the tribe. Okay, his Mary, we're okay. making it a condition. These are conditions. Right, but I'm not going to support those conditions, and I, I don't think they're strong enough. And I, I, I mean, you guys can say this language in F is fine, but this is where you start to lose my vote. I, you, you're going to say, is everybody okay with that language? You can be okay with that language, but I'm not going to vote for F. I'm just letting you know. I hear you. I hear you. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm having a difficult time understanding this. Can you run that by us again? How many understand what she's saying? So, you to do? Say, I do. What is she saying? It's not confirming to our zone bylaws and the neutral flow bylaw. Neutral okay, flow. talk about the neutral flow neutral because that's where I'm most knowledgeable. Okay. So it's a regulation. So we know from the section of the bylaw 174.24C2 that you can only approve a special permit if it's in compliance with your applicable state and town regulations. So we, okay. so the, the flow neutral bylaw is a regulation of the town. Um, it's section 108. It caps the flow at this parcel, 275 Quinnequisset Avenue, to between 15 and 22 bedrooms, using a calculation of one bedroom per 10,000 right. square yeah. feet. Some people I know, they, they, that has to be upland, 10,000 square feet of upland. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be 15 bedrooms. If you added in the wetlands, too, which some people, when they do the one in 10,000 square feet calculation, they don't include the wetlands. But if you use the upper limit of upland and wetland, that's 22 bedrooms. The proposed bedroom count for this project is 36 to 48 bedrooms. This is not consistent with the flow neutral bylaw and is thus not allowed. The flow neutral bylaw established a bedroom count on this lot at 275 Quinnequisset Road of one bedroom per 10,000 okay. square feet of land prior to the date of this application for special permit modification. So it does apply. Okay, I hear what you're saying. And it, we, let's just jump over to H because you're talking flow bylaw. And I think I can speak on this one here. Look at H on page four yep. and we'll come back. The board finds that the Mashpee General Bylaws, chapter 108, flow neutral, applies to the <coughs> subject property which limits present and future wastewater flows to the flows permitted from the property as of the effective date of the Mashpee Com Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan, July 1, 2015. Chapter 108 establishes a one bedroom per 10,000 square feet of lot area limit for multifamily projects such as Cranberry Point. The subject parcel totals 220,650 square feet. As such, under the provisions of Chapter 108, the subject property is limited to 22 <coughs> bedrooms without relief. For those people on the board that may not understand this, what they're saying here is 5.3 acres equals 220,650 square feet. If you want to know how many bedrooms you can build in 220,650 square feet, you divide it by 10,000 square feet which means, which is 10,000 square feet, one bedroom <laughs> uh, per, per lot area. So you, you wind up with 22 bedrooms. I believe that Willow Ben would like to build 12 units with four bedrooms. So that would be 48 bedrooms. So they would be 48 bedrooms minus 22 is um, 26 bedrooms over the flow bylaw limit. So what would they have to do? It's not allowed. I can't say. I can't say. Okay. It's not allowed. OK. It's so, not in. So, so this paragraph H, if, if everybody accepts that it's the total land use, wetlands and upland, <laughs> the 22 bedroom count is correct. But. Okay, that's as far as we can go. So we can approve. Without relief, right? We can approve H. Does anybody not approve? I don't like the words without relief. You don't like what? The words without relief. 
It's under the provision of Chapter 108, the subject property is limited to 22 bedrooms. If I get out what is it? I don't know what you don't like an H because it's it's implying that this is a vi this is allowed with relief. It's not. It's yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah, the bylaw is a, a wall. You can't go through it. So there's no relief to go through. No, it's it's this we're just talking about is this a true statement? Does this apply to Cranberry Point? I I I I don't want to see without the words without relief in there. Wait, wait a minute, I didn't... It, it, it's allowed 22 oh, bedrooms. Oh, oh, That's oh, oh, it. oh, okay. That's it. Oh, I, we, without... Relief. Okay, well, I think where that was going was variant. A waiver, yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. No, we... we yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I, I see where that's going, oh, okay. and I don't like oh, the direction. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> I understand that. Okay. We should remove without relief. Right. And vote now. Is everybody happy with that? Yep. With H. Yep. Okay. So okay. Uh, I don't actually see what's up, what's wrong with the language because the way people do business, there is a potential for some relief, maybe. There, yes. There so is. if we don't say it, we're saying there is no relief, no relief possible. Well, if there is a potential for that to happen, why would you not include great it? Great discretion of the sewer commission. Well, that's right. Yeah. But if they have the discretion, that could mean there would be some relief potentially. Okay, so are you you're saying no? No, I'm saying no. I, I think okay. the language is fine. Okay, all those who do not want without relief in their vote. I don't want without relief in it. Okay, I don't strike either. it. Strike it, yeah. Okay. Strike it. So, so, so what do we have here? We've got the four to four to one. Yeah. So we do we note that as four to one, yes, and one no. Okay, Mary, tell me what we do. No. It's a straw poll. We haven't taken the official vote. It's no. a straw poll. So wait, where am I now? You go so back we're back to, e. to F. Or oh, F, I mean. For the people who are going to vote for this, you want that language in there. I've just explained why I'm going to vote no. I have my three reasons. I don't want F in there, but you guys decide. The, those are sticking issues from my point of view. Yeah. And you're violating two, two, two bylaws or two, two uh, conditions. And, and it's. I mean, we know. might let them go ahead and make the decision and then vote against it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's what, that's well, what we, would happen. We don't have, my understanding is we, we can say what we think should be, but we don't have any authority over flow neutral bylaw. It's going to be the purview of It's the a sewer. town regulation. It does not say in the flow neutral bylaw. If you read it, it I does not it. say this authority falls under. Is this it? is a town regulation. We heard testimony saying it needed to be tweaked. Okay, it needs to be tweaked. Okay, but this is the law of the land that we have now. Remember what this I said? This is what we have now, yes. It was, it was reviewed by town council, right? It was put on the warrant. It was voted for at town meeting, and it went to the AG. It's our it's law. law. So people can say it's a dysfunctional document, but they cannot negate it just because they opined that they don't like it. The only way they can change it is change the law. Is change it. Good. Good. This is what we have to work with. Just, just give me a minute here. All right. Um, all those who are <clears throat> in favor of letter F, project satisfies the requirements. How many say yes? How many say no? 
I, I am saying no. 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 Mary, you're a no. I'm a no. 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 Well, Dale, you're not voting. Oh, yeah. Oh, you can't vote. That's okay. right. You can okay. just smile. And you? Smile. <laughs> I guess I don't. I don't know the answer. I can't argue with that. It's a it's a requirement if you're going to vote and approve the project, Michael. That's what that is. That's a standard has language. To respond. Yeah. To say yes, I know you want to say yes, Michael. No, well, yeah. I guess apparently it doesn't apply. So I guess I would have to agree. For number F, we have four no's. Yeah, I'm going with it. You're going to go with it. Five no's. In that section where it lists all the categories that you have to, in a special permit, you know, <laughs> you water can't. quality, you know, all these things. You you can't approve this special permit without F. You have you have to um, you have to cite reasons why this applies. Why right? Why this is not. You're not water quality. It's fine. This is fine. There's no traffic. This is fine, and so on. The whole list. And if something doesn't apply, for whatever reason, you say does not apply. But you have to respond to each and every one yes. of those special conditions, yes. special permit conditions. Yes. Okay. All right. So G. Okay. The original special permit, 1987, is conditioned on maintaining a minimum 100-foot buffer strip from either edge of Sampson Mill Road and Quinnaquisset Avenue left in its existing vegetative state except for entrance areas, golf course underpass, golf course areas shown on the filed plans. That is my recollection is a correct statement. I just would put in the, the, the special, at, I just would say, I don't know if it's the original special. Um, let me go on. The submitted site plans for Cranberry Point indicate a buffer strip totaling 65 feet. I recall that. Be well, I don't know this part. Between the first condominium and the edge of Quinnaquisset Avenue, which is less than the 100 feet required. We had a big conversation yeah, about I, that. Yeah, no, you're, it, everything is right. That what's, what's, I don't know if it was the original special permit or it was the special permit as amended. And so, I, I believe it was, I believe it was 100. I think it was amended. Was amended. That came in, in at a different date. So yeah. I would say the special permit as amended. If I can remember, I think, yeah. So you, which, when was it amended? It doesn't really matter. Well, well, what are you saying? The original special permit, 1987? Well, how does I, would, this I would use this language. The special permit as amended is conditioned on. Oh, without saying the original I, special. Well, what I would, permit are I we would talking have to find, about? You I don't, would you have don't to, know. Right. I would have to read the 1987 to see if the 100 foot is in there. Because it's my recollection, recollection that it was an amendment. It wasn't the original. Okay. Would you? I will find out. Okay. So we're going to circle Mary that will do more research. there. So something is conditioned on maintaining a minimum 100 foot buffer strip from does that make sense to you, yep. the edge of Sampson? Everything else I think is fine in that. Okay, paragraph. the 65 feet. Okay, I don't know what section I could look that up. Section 9352 of the zoning bylaws. Finds that section 9.352 of the bylaws in place at the time of the original special permit approved stated, approval stated at the time of the original special permit. That means 1987 uh, or 85? 85. 85. Here it is. Uh, oh well, nope! It is it it is the original special permit. Well, Requires a hundred foot buffer strip. Chances are there wasn't amended. Town planner that, would know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. All right. So keep it as is. All right. So section nine point three five two of the zoning laws. Do you know about that? Because I don't. That this is a quote. Yeah, so nine. 
All right, you're going to look that up, that this is a quote? I mean, I'm looking at the wording. I don't know whether it's a quote. I mean, I believe it's a quote, but... Uh, I mean, I'd have to the look language up this, I would makes, have to look up the special permit, but I'm sure it's right. The language makes sense to me. Three, five, two... That's a good point. I don't remember that point a being buffer, raised. Right, oh. right. So by the bylaw, a buffer strip of land equal in width to the front yard requirement of the underlying zoning district will be created along the entire perimeter of the parcel. Where are you? I'm in the 1985 bylaw. Okay. And then you have to look up the dimensional requirements. I'm just reading the quote, and it it it, it 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 sounds right to me. The lang the meaning, the words sound. The buffer strip shall be considered part of the open space. I know that to be true. The buffer strip shall be maintained in its yeah. natural state or landscape, if, in the opinion of the planning board, it's necessary to protect privacy of adjoining landowners, and shall not be used for parking or, very good, or organized recreational activities. The planning board may require a buffer strip in excess of the minimum requirement depending on the use of adjoining land. I think that's very good. It's just, he's yep. saying it's a quote. The dimension, and the dimensional require, the dimensions that are being referenced here, 65 feet, 40 feet, all that is Oh, you're, right. oh, continuing on, okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, applicable <coughs> under the 85 bylaw, I wouldn't know. Yep, it is. Okay, so this is right? Yep. Okay. Which would adequately protect the privacy of adjoining landowners and is not being used for parking, okay, or organized rec. I mean, I'll double check that <clears throat> quote from the special permit. The board sure finds that not. 60 foot does not derogate from the purpose and intent of the bylaw or special permit and exceeds the minimum requirements of the applicable zoning criteria and hereby authorizes a 60 foot buffer between the edge of Quinnaquisset and the limits of development on the subject parcel. Okay, well, it's familiar to me. I couldn't speak to the under the 85 bylaw. Yep, I looked it up. It is. Yep, okay. I think I think everything in G, not striking out anything or changing everything, everything in G is fine. Okay, all those in favor of G? Aye. Yeah. Aye. 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 Yes. yes. H, we've already discussed, and it was, uh, was it four, four to one, or was it, you were, no, four to one. I'm say where I am. I like to put it on relief. You're, you're against it. I, he did, he wants to keep without relief. It's a four, one, zero Oh, he wants vote. to keep with, okay, okay. Everybody else wants to strike without relief. Admittedly, now that I practically memorized the damn flow bylaw, <clears throat> it is poorly written. It is really poorly written. And I can't believe that it passed um, town council's inspection. I, I disagree with you. I, dis, I, there's a, there's a, I disagree with you. Hmm. I think that there's a, there's, a, there's a, if you read the purpose and intent, I it, did. Cl it clarifies everything. Uh, there's this there's this funky paragraph in there that probably should the be taken out, and then who enforces it and how it gets how, the rules and regulations of enforcing it that needs to be put into that bylaw. How those regulations get made, and then somebody needs to make those regulations. Mm -hmm. But um, okay, let's go on to I. The board finds that the subject parcel and surrounding bog system contemplated in the applicant's mitigation package are within or adjacent to areas mapped as moderate pre-contact archaeological sensitivity areas determined from a town-wide pre-contact sensitivity survey. This has got to be a con this is a condition. I can. Are you asking? What's that? 
No, it's not a condition. Um, it's, uh, wait, wait, it's, it's a condition. Just, it, later on, you yes, put that as a condition. Yes, later on, it's a condition. But here, it doesn't mention the condition. We're just saying that we're accepting yeah. his comments. Okay, I, I, I say this is a good paragraph. Anybody object to this? No. No. Okay. It's fine. Mike. Okay. Five, four. Five, two. Uh, Jay, the board finds that the proposed stormwater sediment for Bay proposed with this, within the 65 foot buffer strip along Quinnaquisset Avenue will capture and pretreat stormwater before it enters the wetland system in and around the subject parcel. That's very good. I think Ed has made it that very clear too. And, and did um, Matt Eddy. All those in favor of this? Number J. Number J, yep. yes, yep. Mike? Yep. Yes, yep. for me. Everyone, yes, yep. five yes. Okay. Uh, the submitted plan, site plans were reviewed by the plan board's consulting engineer, Ed Pesci, who vote, provided written responses to the planning board. You know, I don't remember the dates, but I, I'm taking that as correct. Three, t three dates. The board finds that the applicant was responsive to the engineer's comments and made satisfactory revisions to the submitted plans. They definitely did. The board accepts the recommendation of the consulting engineer to recommend approval. In his December 6, 23 letter transmitted as an email to Evan Lair, community develop <clears throat> director, the consulting engineer wrote. We can just read that comment. I remember him saying all this. When, when, the, when he says, I would recommend approval of these plans with the condition that all the Pesci engineering comments are satisfactorily re addressed. <clears throat> this is where I get confused because we're supposed to be determining each finding whether it's a correct statement. A correct statement. Is it factually correct? Should it be in the document or shouldn't it be in the document? I think K is fine. What? I think K is fine. Okay, then, then answer this. As long as you I have. would recommend approval of these plans, even though something does not, you know. You know what you can do is you can put a condition that. Okay, that's what we've done. That the, the, the final plans are approved by our engineer. Yeah. Yes. Right, because we can't approve them because we've closed the public hearing, right? right. But we can delegate that responsibility to yeah. the uh, engineer. So you make it a condition that the final the final uh, plans are um, approved by the town engineer, the um, planning board engineer. So we can't put that in the quote. Is that that's going to be a condition? That's a condition. Okay. <clears throat> All those in favor of K. <clears throat> aye. Yeah. Aye. Yeah. Aye. All five. Five yes. L, due to changes made to the development plans to remove to the maximum extent practical impacts to bordering vegetated wetlands, on-site updates to the drainage and grading plans need to be made to the satisfaction of the consulting engineer. That was one of the things that he left out, left open. So that's what he said. And so that is a correct statement. All those in favor? Aye. Wait, I'm reading it. What's that? I'm reading it. It's exactly right. So that would have to be followed up with a condition. Condition. Too. I believe okay. it is a condition. M, the project on the subject parcel as well as bog restoration contemplated in the plans falls within the jurisdiction of the Mashpee Conservation Commission and requires an issue, issuance of an order of conditions. That is a correct statement. I agree. Yeah. Everybody agree? Yep. yep. All unanimous? And the board finds that the subject parcel is within the jurisdictional buffer of the Maspey Conservation Commission. The 12 condominiums proposed on the subject parcel and the bog restoration contemplated in the plans require review 
and approval by the Conservation Commission. Additionally, the board finds that due to the subject parcel's existence within the jurisdictional buffer of the Mashpee Conservation Commission, the project is exempt from the requirements of the Chapter 175 Mashpee Tree Preservation General Bylaw. That is correct because we do not uh, have jurisdiction and conservation land for, you know. You know, you, you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes, you know. That's something you, I you do know. <laughs> So everyone in favor, yes? Yes. Yep. Five yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now here's the language. Here is the very language that we're talking about. Oh, <clears throat> in conformance with the provisions of Article 6, Section 174-24C2 of the Zoning Bylaw, the Planning Board finds that the proposal will not adversely affect public health or safety, will not cause, if you want to stop, do you want to, well, stop me if you feel this is not correct. Will not adversely affect public health or safety, will not cause excessive demands on community facilities, will not significantly decrease surface or ground water quality or air quality. Hold. Hold. Okay, that's where you're not Going That's with, where it doesn't, because it doesn't comply with the flow neutral yeah, bylaw, right. whose pur its purpose is to protect our water. We can't make that finding. Okay. Not about the, it's about the water quality, not the air quality. Yeah. The water so it quality. will not significantly decrease surface or ground water quality. I can't make that finding. So, I mean, we know realistically with a plant, it will, as opposed to a septic system, it will in decrease or will aid, will make surface water better, but it's not, it's- It's a flow bio, neutral it's bylaw, flow neutral. it's not a nitrogen loading bylaw. Yeah. It's a flow neutral bylaw. Air quality will not, that's, will not have significant adverse impact on wildlife habitat. Was there anything in the LEC that said that it will not adversely affect wildlife? So I can't find that it will, it will not have significant adverse impacts on wildlife habitat or estuarine systems because we have impacted um, those systems, the nitrogen polluted, those estuarine systems. The nitrogen program is an estuary program. Right. And that's why we have a flow neutral bylaw. So I can't make I can't make a finding that it will not have significant impact on wildlife habitat or estuarine systems. We don't know. We really don't know. The flow neutral bylaw is meant to clean up our estuaries. Yeah. So if it's not in compliance with the flow neutral bylaw, then you can't make a finding that the estuary. Well, basically, what you're saying, everything stems from the flow neutral bylaw. If you're not in compliance with that. That and that it has to be in, yes. It, and it also has to be in compliance with our regulations. And because it's over the bedroom count, that's a right, member town council said that's a regulation. Our special permit is a regulation. Mm -hmm. That, because I asked him, can you, can you, approve a special permit modification to a special permit that's not in compliance. Like, how do you say no to that? And he said that special permit is considered a town regulation. And if, and if, you're, not, if, if you're not consistent with the, the requirements of that special permit from how many years ago, who cares? You, you're not, you can't, you can deny the special permit modification. Okay, so we, Okay, so we have, the rest of us haven't voted on this because we're, we're thinking. So let's, so we've got section, so will not adversely affect public health, we've that circled. Will not significantly decrease surface or groundwater quality, circled. Because Mary's a no on this at this point. Air quality, not a problem. We don't know, uh, I don't know whether it will have significant impact on wildlife habitat. I, I, uh, okay, I, I got to, Pass on that one. I don't know. Estuary systems. I have a circle on that. Yeah. Traffic flow is not an issue, I don't think. Is it? Some people complain to me about the traffic. 
from that area. Is it coming out of 275 that there's some kind of, well, there's plenty of so they did, they did, I, I do think that their engineer addressed those because the site, so. they did the sight lines. Yeah. Um, Waterways, let's see, what is this? Fisheries, public lands, or neighboring properties will not significantly decrease surface or groundwater, will not have, will not have significant adverse impact on wildlife habitat, estuary systems, traffic flow, traffic safety, waterways, fisheries, public land, or neighboring properties. Uh, will not cause excessive. Okay, mm -hmm. there's no noise, there's no vibration, there's no, I don't know, there's no electrical disturbance. Radioactivity, radioactivity or glare. Oh, we're not putting any wires up, we don't have any lighting plan. Uh, will not destroy or disrupt any species listed as rare, endangered, or threatened by the mesh bee. They would have spoken up if this were the case, would they not? Right. They didn't. Or any known historic or archaeological site. Hold. Well, but if we've got, Mary, if we've got a condition in there that it has to be done, aren't we, say, can't we say that we have to do a, a, a ground survey or whatever the program is, you know, follow PAL, whatever you're saying there, doesn't that mean with the condition that they have to comply so we we don't know? We, we don't know. We don't know that it's endangered or threatened any known historic or archaeological site. I mean, what do you say, people? They have to do a study, you know. If you do the study, you can't say a priori, meaning before you know, you can't say. I just, I just How don't. How many people know. feel that way? We don't know. Yeah. Okay, I, I we think don't. it's a condition. It's a condition. We, we will know when they do the study. So if, if, if it fails, then we have to. Address it. Address it. So I can't say, I can't say no on that right now. I mean, what, what is the purpose of a condition? Exactly, when it's not enforced. Oh, well, okay, that's, <laughs> that's what I heard, but, you know. And since it's the tribe's historic preservation officer, and they are now a federally recognized tribe, I am not going there. Granted, well, you know, granted, the comment came in you know, very late, and I'm sure it could have been done, you know, and the, the whole time that we had the, I, I get it. If That's came, pretty sad, you know, if you're, if you're saying that, you know, you know more about the town decisions than I do, if the conditions are not met. So we just blow it off and say, what are we sitting here for if we don't follow the conditions? That's why you... Exactly. No. I wish somebody would tell me if we do follow the... I mean, I have an issue with... I'm, I'm licking my wounds. Pompiness. I'm looking by once. All right, so so Mary's the only one who's opposed to saying no on that. I have a hold on the historic and um, no, archaeological. Well, hold. Sites. I mean, what do you mean a hold for? That I have that circled. Oh, like you guys. It sounds like you guys are fine with that being resolved with a condition. Yes, with a condition. I think it will be. I mean, okay. I, one thing I have to say about Willow Bend, you know, whatever other people may think, I do believe they will follow through on these conditions. If we didn't think so, we wouldn't be here. I agree. And is the I condition predicated on the tribe approval or verification? Well, they have to tell yeah. us. Uh, we, they, uh, maybe Willowbend already knows how to do an archaeological study. They did one. So they'll they did do one already. Yeah, I'm sure they've yeah, done one. Yeah, there's a system that they have. It, it just... Um, the the comet came in very late. Yeah, which and is too bad that it had to go this long. It it did come in very late. It, it, as we know, it was something in a newspaper article that kind of brought that up. And um, anyways, I'm all right. So I'm not going to fight you on it. Okay. So uh, continuing on, no vibration, no electrical disturbance. I don't believe radioactivity or glare will not destroy or disrupt any species listed as rare, endangered, or threatened 
that's not going to happen because Massachusetts Natural Heritage Program would have come in on this. Yeah, it's not in there. You're saying you're holding on archaeological site. Uh, it will not produce N amounts of trash, refuse, or debris in excess of the town's landfill and waste disposal capacities, <clears throat> hardly. Will properly dispose of stumps, I'm sure about that. Construction debris, hazardous materials, and other ways. Will provide adequate off-street parking, I'm sure of that. Will not cause excessive erosion or cause increased runoff into neighboring properties. Doesn't the stormwater management plan prevent that? Yeah, that's all set. Yeah. That's all set. So everything, let's see. Everything to the end, I think, is fine. Yes, so everything is, so the only <coughs> things that you're pointing out will not adversely affect, you say you're holding on that, will not adversely affect public health. I didn't say public health. I don't know, did somebody oh, else? Oh, what did you say? Um, not significantly increase okay. uh, surface or groundwater quality. Uh, will not significantly adverse. Does anyone adverse have a, an objection to any of these? No, no, just a condition on the. As long as it's a condition. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. All those in favor or. or I don't know feel, what you're talking feel about. Feel O is correct. I don't know what you. Uh, just repeat what you're saying, Karen. We're saying as long as we have conditions, and we do, as, as we'll go forward and show you. Um, you're saying about you a known as, long, as long as we have the conditions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I still don't understand what you're saying. Okay. Just say it to me uh, again. We're saying that we're okay with this language, like known historic or archaeological site, as long as there is a condition. Yes. Right. Okay. And you're saying forget the conditions because they don't gonna, follow not, the law anyway. That's your bad. I'm not going to. I'm not going to fight you on it. Okay. Right, I'm not going to fight you on it. Okay, so all those in favor of all this think, you know, I don't, everything's that's by That's what condition. I don't understand. Wait, you're so, saying, you're saying that you can, you, everybody here feels that they can make a finding on the historic or archaeological site. Conditioned upon being approved okay. by. But the other uh, ones okay. regarding decrease in surface and groundwater quality and impacts on estuarine systems. Those you're not voting on right now. I I have holds on those. I you know yeah. will not significantly decrease surface or groundwater quality. I believe that's true, but but you're saying, and I understand what you're saying, the flow neutral precludes, you know, that's trumps how, it. The whole purpose of the flow neutral bylaw is to do that. And if it's not in compliance with the flow neutral bylaw, we can't make that finding. Yeah. yeah. Isn't right. the condition okay. to be come in compliance with the flow neutral bylaw? Well, he's got you, that you, in you the can't. condition. So if it's a condition, then that's okay. <clears throat> I'm saying it's not strong enough for me to support. Okay. okay. I think it's strong right. enough for me. I'm, I'm good with what we said. We voted on. So five, four people are for it, and Mary's got a hold on some something here. I, well, that's the historic and archaeological site. Yes, historic. Okay. Historic. So what are we doing will not significantly decrease surface or groundwater quality? Well, you said no. Right. You, and we... I think we, Rob said no, too. Okay, let me just... So well, if you look at it as a flow neutral... Yeah. yeah, so I say no, too, then. Yeah, I say I no, want, too. I don't want no. to disturb that at all. Okay, we, so... We get money for that. The most important thing is okay, so source. let's see what and is with it? that it's you have to circle in the estuarine <coughs> system because the flow neutral bylaw all has to do with nitrogen management that comes from the estuary programs. Where is that? It's, right below it. It's right below it. Oh. I don't think we can say anything about wildlife habitat, but we can not find regarding estuarine. Okay, systems. all those who disagree with will not significantly decrease surface or groundwater quality uh, and will not have a significant impact, not have significant impact on Adverse estuary impact. systems. How many feel that is a true statement? I can't I find thought, that. Michael's going to. I thought that was one of the things that we, we looked at as the condition of being compliance with the 
the water flow bylaw. Flow bylaw. And if okay. there was, if that's a condition that that flow bylaw mm -hmm. is works, then this that's a condition that I'm See, fine with this. We're we may know what the flow bylaw says, and we may have interpreted the way we've interpreted, but we are not the ultimate decision maker about flow neutral. Right now we That's are. Right. We are. Right now we are, because yeah. it doesn't say who are the other people who do it. Well, it does say it in this it's, document it, here. It says that it's a, it's a town regulation, and we can't approve something if it's not in compliance with the town regulation. Okay. That don't mean that the uh, conservation can't give a, a variance, though. I mean, we could vote against this. Cause yeah, they've got, always got the out for a variance. Right. And right. the fact that, that Willowbend has the capacity to <coughs> add this to their, you know, list of homes. Yeah, like, like that. That's how yeah. I do it. But yeah. I'll be getting All right. I'm, I'm really getting tired now. I got up at <laughs> 6 o'clock. Mary, tell me what we just what we're doing here right now. You're you're not agreeing with. I can't find that the project will not significantly decrease surface or groundwater quality. Okay. I can't find that the project project will not have significant adverse impact on estuarine systems. Okay. How many agree with Mary? Me. One, two. Three. Do you, Mike, oh, or not? We can't find that it will either. Well, not because we have conditions that we're adding in. I, it, I know what you're they, saying. If they if they go through with the conditions and we do that, and then and the conditions determine that in fact it didn't significantly decrease it, how can significantly we significantly decrease it? But what Mary's saying is, the answer has to be, it does because it violates the flow neutral bylaw. Yeah. Ten thousand. One bedroom for 10,000 square foot of lot area. I don't know. I, you know, we just get hung up in words here right now, I feel. Okay, so we voted on that and everything else. Oh, and she's got known historic or archaeological site. We're not voting uh, against that. No. So that's a yes for four of us. Yeah, as long as it's a condition. Or yes. Yes, it is a condition. Okay, so I guess we better go through the conditions. It won't, it's not much left to go. Okay. Okay, so, so the project shall be constructed in conformance with the following plans. So if this is everything, if this is current, uh, all these different pages. So we have to add <clears throat> that the plans, the final plans are approved by our... The final plans are the what? The final plans are approved by our board engineer. Yes. Um, let's see, where, is, where should that go? I guess it could go right there. Mm -hmm. the project it's right under it. It's B. Under where? Thank you. And just the applicant shall Those submit are... updated and final grading and drainage plans to the planning board for its files to the satisfaction. Well, that's just limited to grading and drainage. It's my understanding those are the only sheets that need revision. However, they were, I just want to note that the reason that those are highlighted is solely because I, I didn't want to reference sheets that would have a future revision date on it. Right. So I'm, I'm hesitant to, and typically we include the sheets with specific revision dates, uh, but in the event, since we're not, since there's like a contemplation of Ed's final review and approval, I'm hesitant to include specific sheets because the revision dates will change thereafter. Okay. So those might need to change or go. The applicant shall submit up on B, shall submit updated and final grading and drainage plans to the planning board for its file to the satisfaction of the planning board's consulting engineer. Um, that's a condition. Well, what you're saying, we need that, that he will approve. You mean you want it global, Mary? I think, I'm sorry. I think that's fine. Okay. I think any it's fine. I think I was wrong. To, any think, objection to be? I think that's fine. Grading, nope. drainage, and utilities plans. Pardon me? Grading, drainage, and utilities plans. Grading, and drainage, utilities. and utility. We should add and utility plans? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad you caught that. I think we should call it specifically the sheets that need to be approved. Which sheets need to be approved? Which is probably um, 
C4.0 through C4.3 and C5.0 through C5.2. Say it again. In parentheses, what are the sheets? C uh, C4.0 through C4.3 and C5.0 through C5.2. So that series, the four and the fives. Oh, all the fours and all the fives? Correct. Uh, you know, probably list the specific revision dates for each of the rest of the sheets. Fours and fives. Okay. Okay, the uh, C, to mitigate the impacts of the bedroom that exist and that are proposed in the project that exceed 853, the applicant shall. That's a correct statement, one and two. All those approve? Mm -hmm. All yes? Yep. Five yes. D, the applicant shall demonstrate, here, here's the condition, compliance with the requirements of Chapter 108 Flow Neutral Bylaw to the satisfaction of the Sewer Commission or other relevant authority. It is the Sewer Commission that they have to convince, Mary. To get a waiver. They could, they could give a waiver. <laughs> to get a waiver, but it's not the Sewer Commission that says you're in compliance with the Flow Neutral Bylaw. The Flow Neutral Bylaw doesn't say that. It's a town regulation. We are acting as the town at this point. Right. Yes. Okay. And if it's written wrong, fine, but that's our law that we have right now. And we can try to spin it off. Oh, it's this person that's responsible. No, right now, we're responsible for this. So it's, you know, it's a condition that's in there. You know, I'm not going to be able to find the stuff on the other page. So whatever conditions go forward, I'm, I'm voting no on the whole thing because I can't find. Okay. I can't make but the finding in number an O. So you can put whatever conditions you want that make you feel well, good we, from this we, point we on, but. We didn't all agree with every finding there. I mean, you know, you're not alone on a couple of those things. Oh, if a couple of them, yeah. Yeah. Is it a correct statement that you have, if it, if you, if it is, if one of those elements in that big recitation of issues, if one of those things is relevant to the, your the plan, and you cannot comply with that, then does the does the plan fail? Yeah. If you miss, if you can't agree on one. No. I mean, you can't. And this is what Dennis taught me way in the beginning. You can't just vote no because you don't like the plan. You ha you have to have a reason. Okay. okay. Right, for right. voting no, you right. can't just say, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like the color. Okay. They're gonna paint D, the house. D. Let's move on. D is. A correct statement. They have to demonstrate compliance. If they can't demonstrate it, it fails. But it's to the satisfaction of the sewer commission or other relevant authority. Well, I don't know who the other relevant authority would be. I don't know, be. and I don't think it's the sewer commission so, that runs well, this. But. It, but it says right in the agreement, in the flow neutral bylaw, the sewer commission does the waiver. They can waive it. But they don't determine whether you're in compliance or not. I believe that right now, because it's a bylaw, it, it's, it, it, it's us. We're the special permit granting authority. Well, I'd like to get educated on this because I really, well, I don't. <laughs> I'll tell you, this job is harder than well, practicing gonna, law. They would have to demonstrate compliance with the sewer commission before anything else anyways. Not necessarily. How, who else would they determine compliance with if it's not exactly? Same? Right now, it's us. You're going to tell them they're in compliance with the requirement of the full measure bylaw. You are. Yeah, you can, because you can I read that? it. I read it. Well, we all read it. I read it, and it's limited in bedrooms. <laughs> okay, I guess I didn't realize you were a uh, sewer commission. Expert, so I have so. a master's in environmental science. I've worked professionally in community development for 19 years. Right. I've sat on this board for 15 years. Are you kidding me? I think I'm qualified. Yeah. I, I think I am. I have a degree in physics from Boston University. I think I'm qualified. Write it down for me, because I'll forget all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather say it to you, Mike. <laughs> like somebody else who comes to this board and speaks. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, okay, so 
I just have I have no comment on D. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to vote for it. I have no comment I, on I D. I can take off our other relevant authority because I don't know who other relevant authority is. So I'm going to say yes on D. Do you agree with D? I, if you should say to the satisfaction of the relevant authority because it's really not determined. Well, I'm just reading what it says in here. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave it alone. The applicant shall... How many are for this? Are you for D? Yeah, if it would, if it would make you know the extra Taking comfortable, you could say, and the planning board. It says the sewer commission. I disagree with D. Well, unless he put it in there. Well, I don't know why he'd put it in there because I don't know any other relevant authority. Are we? He should just say the relevant authority. He didn't say that. Jesus. I'm going to say yes because, you know, if my knowledge is wrong, then. Well, um, it's not wrong if it says sewer commission or other relevant authority. We just oh, don't know who that authority is right now. Who is that? Yeah. Well, the planning board, right? Other relevant authority? Is the planning board? I would, I would guess it's the planning board. So. I see. So there's sewer commission and planning board. Yeah. I mean, it comes to us first. And then it goes we can only be wrong thing. once. <laughs> no, things can get remanded back. You can go through the whole thing again. <laughs> All right. Do you, how many people want to keep other relevant authority in here? I Anybody? Do. I mean, I like to know who that other. We'd relative. like to know who that hell that person is. I wonder what he had in mind when he wrote other relevant authority, or he was just covering his bases. Mm -hmm. Confusing it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> nope. Why don't we just leave it as is? Okay. All right. There I must mean, be I'm... a reason. Keep keep uh, or other relevant authority. I'm yep. going to say yes. Five, a uh, four, four people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three. Yes. Four. It's kind of lame. It's ambiguous. Four. And you don't want ambiguous. You know, ambiguous. What? It's, okay. it's ambiguous. Yes, you know, it is. And, and you he, he wrote eliminate it that way. All, all of that out. Yeah. And if there is no other relevant authority, too bad. <laughs> or, yeah, how does that hurt us? <laughs> it doesn't, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Now, here. The applicant shall demonstrate compliance, okay? Uh, by demonstrating one or more one or more of the following, the total land area held in common throughout Willowbend that has not been conveyed to private property owners area results in less than one bedroom per 10,000 square feet based on all available estimates of existing and planned bedrooms. See, that is that one is a real problem for me because the way I read the flow bylaw, it's a, how do, how do I say this? This may be a true statement, but just because the whole universe of Willow Bend has less than 10,000 square feet, yeah. I mean, you know, it doesn't make it right. Yeah, I like get rid of that. I, I, yeah. I don't know where that came from. It's an argument. It's an argument that... Developing is good for the environment, and adding more units yeah. lowers density. It, it, yeah. it, you know, it, it's just math. It's a mathematical argument that we don't have to accept. I don't think it hurts okay. taking uh, it out. That, how I think does it, that? I think it hurts leaving it in. I think it's. Um, how do you vote on that? You're not sure. No. I think you should just stop. Ugh. I think you should just stop it at, after the applicant shall demonstrate compliance with the requirement of Chapter 108 flow neutral bylaw to the satisfaction of the sewer commission or other relevant authority, period. You don't have to get into everything else. Yeah. Uh, wait, what you're saying, uh, you, Roman numeral you, one? D. No, D. 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 I think first, you should just leave sentence. the first sentence and then get rid of everything else. Wait a minute, let me just see. But it, it's ask. It's saying, how can Willow Bend? Willow Bend has to demonstrate compliance. Right. So when right. So 
So, so you give them if, if, if there's an entity that's going to show compliance, right, these are the arguments mm -hmm. that are leading to showing compliance. That's not our job. We don't make those arguments. This is like leading the subject, leading, leading the relevant, relevant authority on this. This is how we feel. We're, I don't think we need to put those things in there. They're, they're we're telling, arguments. We're telling. They're the, arguments that, that the project Willibet, proponent. Here are arguments you can use. Right. And that's not our job. We don't argue. It, it's just they, they, they have these arguments. They can use them if they want. We don't have to put them in our decision. You're, you're right, Mary. You're right. We shouldn't tell them what the arguments are. They can. They can figure them out. I wonder if I'll be able to talk about this when this thing is over. Yes, I have a lot to say. I would like to know some things. I, I have a lot to say. I've been keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> All right, so how many people want to strike one, two, and three Roman numerals? I, I think you should just keep the first sentence only. Get rid of one, two, and three, but also that second, given the parcel size, 22 bedrooms are allowed on the parcel by right. We do not want to state that. Why not? Because we're not, because You said we're the, we're the dis authority here. Okay, now you've really lost Because me. I really think it's only 15 bedrooms that are allowed, uh, to tell you the honest truth. No, I don't, I don't agree. I okay. agree it's 22. I mean, I've thought about this. But we don't need to put it there. No. We don't need it there. We don't need Advoca it there. Okay, you're saying do not, do not tell them how we're thinking. Just simply say, the applicant shall demonstrate compliance with the requirements of Chapter 108 Flow Neutral Bylaw to the satisfaction of the Sewer Commission. Right. Yep. Just let them do that. I, I agree. They're only going to do it by demonstrating ways to do it, so you don't have to say that. Right. And we and might call, inadvertently cause a conflict. Yep. We, how is that? Because they're going to fight about whether it's 22 or 15? Which I don't understand 15, but that's another question. Okay, so what do you say, Rob? No, there was the, the division of wetland and upland. You know, do you include it or not? Yeah, so it, that's it, a, all this all this one and one bedroom and 10,000 square feet. It's it's. I haven't done any much research on it, and I don't. But. There's a lot of calculations of that that are upland only. They don't include the wetland. It doesn't say that in the flow neutral bylaw. I know, but it talks about Title V and all of that stuff, and I'm not an well, expert. What does that have to do with? Because, I don't know, Karen. Okay, I'm, it's, I, it's... I'm not uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable stating that they're allowed 22 bedrooms. Oh. How I know that they're people, not allowed more than 22. How many people want that taken out? I do. I, I don't I think mean, it's, I don't I, care you know, whether it's in or out. My, I don't think it's necessary. Is, sometimes I wonder how much somebody knows on this commission. I, I, that makes me sick to my stomach, Karen. Really? That's so insulting. Well, I mean, there's some people who really do know. Yeah, but, well, we all contribute the best we can. I, I know, we do. And this state but I may be trying to help is somebody. set up so that people like us make these decisions to protect our town. The town, that's what we're working for, the town. You know, it, it, the state statute created this board of citizens. People bring their questions to us to make those decisions. We are empowered by state law. We live in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We don't live in a dictatorship. We're Professionals make all the decisions. We're citizens. We're fine making this. Don't doubt yourself, Karen. You can do this. This is the way lawyers think. The glass is always <laughs> half empty. <laughs> Don't go down We're that road. Do We're doing good. All We're right, so how there. many people want all that other language, Roman numeral one, two, three, stricken, mm -hmm. and want the language of Stop it at the application. Applicant shall demonstrate compliance with the requirement, Chapter 108, to the satisfaction of the Sewer Commission or other relevant authority. Period. That speaks for itself. That's fine. All right. I write it. Okay. So all the rest is stricken. Or other. I got to. Other. Hmm. Okay. 
Mary, when you learn other who the other relevant authority is, please let me know. Okay, so that's the I can't start going to those meetings too. E. Restore 5.3 acres of cranberry bogs to natural wetland systems identified in the site plans around the perennial stream called Quaker Run, subject to the issuance of an order of conditions from the Mashpee Conservation Commission. Until adequate performance security is posted with the Mashpee Conservation Commission for the scope of the restoration, no building permits shall be issued for this project. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Good to me. Yes, yes. all five. Yes. yes. The applicant shall retain the services of public archaeology, laboratory, POW, or similar qualified firm to conduct a site assessment, sometimes referred to as phase one or phase 1A investigation, I don't know anything about it, of the project site at 275 Quinnequisset Avenue, as well as any of the parcels identified for bog restoration on the submitted site plan with the Wampanoag Tribal Historic Preservation Officer present during any of these site visits. The site assessment shall should take advantage of the most advanced archaeological technologies available to determine the, with accuracy the likelihood of any archaeological resources on the sites. Additionally, the scope of work shall include at a minimum. Why do we have to pen, get a pending response from David? And we can't. Hmm? We can't. No, we can't. The public hearing is closed. We can't get more closed. information. We can't. Because the public hearing is closed. No. But by saying that we would do we a can say that <laughs> We can say the scope of work shall be approved by the Conservation Mashpee Commission. Wampanoag Tribe oh, the six. Preserva Historic Preservation Officer. Well, who are they the only people who can? What, the they're, the, they're a legally, they're like a, a hmm. so anyways. So if the, if when the. When this stuff happens and there's a historic site or an archaeological site of interest, the state, oh, okay. the state has a preserv historic preservation officer, and local tribes have. Okay, uh, so it has nothing to do with conservation. So, no, okay. but they have standing. So in they're this. the decision makers. So if you just said, additionally, the scope of work shall be approved by the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe Historic Preservation Officer, that's how he can comment, and and we're done. Okay, give me the sentence. The scope of work shall, shall be, be approved by the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribal Historic Preservation Officer. Um, prior to any commencement of work. We also want to put something in here that it's like um, before any building permits are issued, right? You want this work done before. Yeah. Oh, well, of course. Right? Oh, but put it in. So prior, so at the beginning, prior to any issuance of a building permit. Okay. How many are for that language and that whole paragraph? Yeah, can I have I a am? question? The restoration of the bogs are going to be simultaneous with building. No? A build, you have to get a building permit before you can do that. Right. Well, well the bog. conservation, oh, okay. They, they can't touch the bogs unless the Conservation Commission gives them a certificate, uh, oh. no, a, an okay. order of conditions. But you can't get a building permit until the ar archaeological is satisfied. That's what I'm saying. But the, uh, some of the archaeological is going to be in the bog area. That's true. OK. So, um, so that's, that's restrictive. Right. You, you, you got to complete all the bogs before Very you Very good point. You're absolutely right. So, so you're permit. good with prior to any issuance of a building permit and prior to any issuance of or any, any site work? The commencement of any site I think work? You would take commencement of site work, not completion. Uh -huh. Just commencement, not completion. You just said all the bogs had to be done. That's not. So, so how about, or any commencement of the bog work described in E above? 
Okay. Yeah, I just didn't want you to build right. the developer into a box that he has to complete all the bog work before he puts yeah. a shovel in the ground for the complete, houses. Complete the archaeological right. work. Not the bog work. Well, the bog work, same thing. I'm just saying. But, yeah, you're not gonna but to do archaeological work on the bogs, isn't it almost beginning to to do labor on the bog to yeah. get the muck out of there and the hundred years of right. peat and whatever is in there? Oh, they just do no, examples no. So, in, so the first part of F would say prior to any issuance of a building permit or the commencement of any work in the bog, bog uh, commencement of the bog work as described in E above, comma, the applicant shall retain the services of a of the public archaeological laboratory. Blah blah blah. All right, Mary. So okay, before, yeah. Before there's any the shovels services. in the ground. Yeah. Okay, that that works. I think that works. Okay, work. Mary, do me a favor. Well, I'm going to I'm going to hold on this till I see your language next time just okay. on this. Okay, cuz it's I was getting tired and I'm getting very Well, it's it's 10:30. Well, I know, but you should get, be tired. If I'm you get tired. up at 6, you know, it, I got up at 6 today. Can I just help you with one thing? Yes. Comment, if I may. Yes. Just I think Bob, you were just concerned about bog restoration. I think you're all trying to just make sure that the PAL survey is done prior to any work being done. We have to protect any threat of disturbance of our archaeological significant resources. Is that correct? Right. Mm -hmm. So PAL can do that before any work gets done. Right. But but they're going to be restore, digging in the bog, they aren't they? They restore the bog. They, don't, they do sampling. They do the samples. Land. Oh, okay. Completely. So just so you understand the scope of what they do. Okay. They sample so they, the bog. They set up a grid and they do some sampling, right. representative sampling, to determine if they think, this phase one, think there's some possibility that there's things there. You also added language about the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer approving that. I think you want to maybe just offer this for you to consider. Isn't that making him an approval authority? Yep. Yeah. An approval authority? They Don't you are. you want them to comment on it? Yeah. Not approve it, but a comment on it? It's up well, to you. Does, does, I, well, they, you're telling us that they approve it, that they the state has given them the power to approve the, this it, Because of our federally recognized tribe, it's the federal government that gives them the authority. It's the federal government. So yeah. they do approve it. So, so it says here, additional, right now, it's, it's before I made the amendment, it says additionally the scope of work shall, be, shall include at a minimum, and it says response from David Whedon, right? So why not just say, additionally, the scope of work shall be approved by? Because we're, we're saying that we were going to take what yeah, David Whedon yeah. wanted anyways. Uh -huh. So I don't think that, that saying that the scope of work has to be approved by the Mashby Wampanoag Tribal Historic Preservation Officer before... Do you need a building permit to do an archaeological study? No. No. Okay, so they can do it, and they're only digging a little bit into the bog so they I mean, can do Ed, it. Ed, I think, is saying it should be reviewed by. Are you talking about the scope of work or the study? Yeah. Okay. No, the scope yeah. of work. Yeah. I had yeah. intended on having you define the scope in this decision so that it was clear and unarguable right. by the applicant. Well, the scope has to follow the rules of um, PAL. Well, PAL is just a company. Oh, wait a minute. Um, yeah, the, well, I don't yeah, know what the phase. tribal preservation officer is not going. I mean, the, they know once that report comes out and study what to do with that information. Okay. That whether that falls under their jurisdiction or not, they know that. I'm just saying that the 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 scope of work for PAL P A L shall be approved by the for their archaeological survey. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Go ahead, write it. Yeah. Let's go to B. That's fine. B's fine. Or G's fine, rather. Okay. Local preference. Yeah. I like that. Uh, H. Correct. Um, do we want to say anything about um, construction times? Yeah. What do you usually put in there? No. About construction time, about what part of the so construction? So Dennis has this, no, has this conduct. It's not at 7, and you got to leave. Well, you can have overtime, but 
usually like five yeah, hours of, op of, of, of operation, operation of the project. Yeah. And then um, you can, no Sunday, no Sunday. Yeah, works. no Sundays. Unless they, unless they get special permission. permission because Who on gives some them jobs, special permission? They, if, Us? If, on some jobs, they get something coming in, yeah. and the truck happens to be there on Sunday. And they have right. that couple of guys. Okay, who gives a special so permission? So who wants, who do you want to delegate the special permission? I think the building department, right? You want the building, or do you want the director of community development? Well, most of the associations have hours that people are allowed to okay. work certain yeah. times a year. Okay, so, so all right, let's do. just do the building commissioner. Yeah, let's say he can do. Because... Um, there's sometimes emergencies, like they just have right. to do it, I mean, I, and and it's true. They're the one. The building commissioner will be the one to get called. We want to make this H, and then so the hours have... of construction are limited to 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday, with no work on Sunday allowed un without the permission of the building commissioner. What's the or, or what's holidays. the or holidays? Or holidays. What's the end uh, end time? Seven to what? 5 p.m. I mean, most crews, they go to like 3. No three weekends. 3.30. 3 30. I mean, except. But sometimes you have overtime. You have to finish the roof or, you know, whatever. And remember, this happens. This is a way that if there's a complaint, the, the building commissioner can look at this special permit and then enforce it. We have that up in New Seabury, right? The time limits and stuff, right? We have. We have the regular hours and summer hours. Yeah. I, Saturday I, till one o'clock, not till. Okay. I've also seen other boards and commissions use a Saturday hour too, so seven to five, and then eight to five, or eight to three on Saturdays. Right. And we do we do seven Half seven days. to one. That's it. Seven to one. Just Saturday. people like to have them start later on Saturday, so they're not waking up all the neighbors that aren't working. All right. So the hours are Monday through Friday, <laughs> works, seven a.m. to yeah. five p.m. What are the hours yeah, on Saturday? Eight. You know, it should be a little later because people 8 sleep. Yeah, 8 a.m. to 2.30. Let's say 3 p.m. What's the half hour for? Yeah. They don't take lunch. Oh. You know, they don't take lunch and you work at 2.30. If you take lunch, you got to work at 3, 3 o'clock. Oh. Jobs have been on, that's what we used to do. We, we're not going to take our lunch, so we can leave at 2.30. Let's know? give them till 3 in case okay. somebody wants to take lunch. Then no work on Sunday or, or holidays. holidays unless approved by the building by building commission like okay I'm sure he was going to be happy with that one okay okay this is now like boilerplate language here I is fine we have fine with that J, oh, I'm, I'm, let me let me just go through this here quickly. I J K are all fine. All right. Good. Okay with I J K. Yep. 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 Five to zero. Yes. And L. That's just the rule. I, oh, I'm confused about that. This decision must be recorded. I thought it was 90, day, 90 days. Okay, Mary, do you know the answer to that? No, but we can find I thought out. it was 90 days from the time we render a decision. This is not talking about when it's filed with the clerk. It's talking oh, about filing the, the clerk. Oh, filing the clerk. They need to deliver a recorded copy yeah. of the permit within 60 days subsequent to the appeal period closing. Well, I, I'll, okay, I'll, I didn't quite get that. I'm not going to have you repeat it, but. Endorsement to the board is, what is endorsement by the board? Saying we approve it without a written, what is endorsement as opposed to approve? What are you, looking at? What are you asking about? Yeah, the decision must be recorded within 60 days of their endorsement by, the board's endorsement. So you sign the do a decision multiple times. Once that's the endorsement. By this one member to say we've approved it. Here's our decision. That's okay. So you that's the endorse it with by the full body. Oh, got it. That's the signing of of the special permit decision. No. I'm, I didn't hear your question. 
I think that language is fine. The whole time. Okay, but I'm just asking for maybe the next well, one that I've, comes down the pipe. I felt that way too, Evan. I've been talked over. Again, I've been argued with. I've been slammed. What's that? Yeah. I am just trying what to is it? Question. What is it that we're endorsing? The language is—is is it the special permit decision? Yes, the, the endorsement would be subsequent to the closure of an appeal period, where you endorse the process for recording at the registry of deeds. Yep, the language okay. is fine, Karen. Okay. Okay. The language is fine. all right. So okay, five one, five zero. Okay, and expiration is fine. Incorporate by reference herein. Okay, so okay. So why don't I type up my um, just that yeah stuff for you, Karen? And okay, well maybe everybody can, wants it too. Well, I'll give it to you as chair. Uh, that's PG. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give it to you as chair. We're, I think that's the that's right, a good conduit. Can I ask you a quick question not related to this? Sure. I was thinking while I was sitting here about your site meeting coming up. Yes. At 47474. Right. Um, we'll meet on the I, corner. Yeah, well, I was thinking it would be a good idea to meet at the current EJ Prescott site to see their operation to give you a perspective. Uh, where, where is that? It's 89 Industrial Drive. And I'm going to, I have an email prepared to Chris Corain to ask him if he could ask his client to do that. 89 idea. Industrial Drive? 89 Industrial Drive. It's in, in the industrial park across from, from uh, um, Mashpee Commons. So, so it's in that. our car will follow you there? Well, we can, we can meet at 474, then go there, whichever way you want. But I need to find out, is 9 o'clock OK? Do they prefer us be there at 10 o'clock? You know, I, 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 I'm sorry, Ed. I must be really we're, tired. Wait, wait we're Why not done we... with this, Ed. Hold on. Why don't you do that through Karen Leslie in the office? I just got to ask the board if you would like to meet. That's all. Whatever you want to do, just send it to Karen. I did. I'm CCing Karen. She'll send yeah. it out, and we'll, we'll be there. Yep. We're not done with this, Ed. Sorry. We're still. So um, I'll send you the, and yeah, so we'll okay. keep it on the agenda for the next time. Is everybody here? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is the next time. Do we want to do natural resources tonight? Absolutely not. You don't need to do anything other than know that I've merged the chapters. I think it looks great. What do you think, Mary? Oh, no, we should go through it. I think that, that we, we should go through it. Think, not, not now. Okay. Not All now. Right, good. All right. I, think I mean, we might have to do like a, a, an, a special meeting for it. I mean, we're, what's next? I think we're booked solid in the first Wednesday in May. I think it looks great to me. I do have just a few things. Well, then it shouldn't take long at all. I don't think it's going to take long at all. <laughs> oh, say, so let's see. What did we miss? Uh, so we'll continue this to the next meeting. Okay. Um, Good with everybody, right? Okay. We we didn't. Uh, did Ed? Did you have any project reviews and inspections other than 474? Nothing else. Okay. Thank you. None. Good job. Ed. All right. Um, okay. Um, well, you got Rodney's letter, or you heard it. Seventy-five dollars for thirty years. Yeah, that's Seventy-five dollars a year, which is. Quite amazing. Yes. Um, next, shall we do a harbor management report next time? I'm going to do everything next time. No, not necessary. I think, I think housing so. production update. You went to affordable housing yesterday. Yeah, you'll Five. have a plan to review um, by mid May. Mid May? It'll probably be available sooner. Okay. okay. Has, has some of the market rates oh, we stopped to with the first. Has that been taken thing. out? The well, now that May first is backed, I'll anticipate That's transmitting a draft for you to begin reviewing okay. for final adoption, probably for your second meeting. In May. I would imagine the draft will be completed before then, uh -huh. and I could transmit it to you. But I would advise we wait till okay. second meeting in May, just given the large agenda on May one. Okay. Are there any board member committee reports? None. Nothing. So a motion to adjourn, please. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. <laughs>